Hello, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me okay and stuff. Um, let me see if you guys cannot hear me. Please um say something in the chat. Okay. Oops. Let me see. Uh, I want to lower this and stuff. Oh, let me see if I can hear myself. If I can hear myself, then I think I'm golden and stuff. But let's see. Oh, yeah, I can. All right. So good. All right. I you guys can hear and see me. Welcome, everybody. It is Friday again, okay, for Embroidery Happy Hour. Thank you so much for joining me. And for those that are new, I'm Jeanette from Sorry for Sewing Crafts, and I like to host this show every Friday so I get to share information about what I learn about embroidery and all that good stuff, okay? So I'm just going to get right to it because... I know this is going to be a really hot topic for a lot of folks, and I want to talk to you guys about the best sellers, items that are the best sellers. So the way, but before I do that, though, just so if for those of you guys that are new, the first hour, I get straight into the topic, okay, because, you know, I like to value people's time. And after that, after I get all the topic out there, you know, I share the information, I do like to go to the chat, I like to say hi to you guys. And I like to answer any questions that are in the chat. Okay, so, you know, just want to let you guys know how I roll. Okay, so let's get to it. All right. So we're going to be talking about best sellers of embroidery. Okay. Now, some folks do embroidery just for fun. Other people do it for fun, but they also do it as a business on the side. Okay. Um, and I guess I kind of fall into that category, okay? Because I actually love doing embroidery. It's something that I really enjoy doing. Um, I love to do it so that I could give uh, gifts to my friends and my family. You know, I like to really give people stuff that is very, very unique and something that's really made for them. Um, the other thing, though, is that I also do it because, you know, when I do started giving gifts and stuff like that people will find you know see the gifts they'll be like oh my god where did you get that from and before you know it boom i had to start an embroidery business okay and the word got got around locally where i live so i end up doing a lot of embroidery for local businesses by me and also for neighbors and other people that just need small job embroidery um, I also do big jobs too, but you know, um, those, you know, come and go, but I actually, most of my orders are small jobs, which I don't mind doing. Cause I kind of, I kind of like it anyway. So, but let's talk about, um, you know, the business side, right? If you are doing embroidery for a business, of course, you're going to be doing it because you want to make money. Right. But a lot of times what happens is, you know, you like embroidery, but you don't know what's going to sell. All right. So one of the things that I did was I wrote down about like six things that you need to be thinking about and also six things that might be selling. OK, you know, like best sellers that I know for a fact are going to be selling, um, you know, that's something that a lot of people ask for. And, you know, if you're you, if you're doing embroidery as a business, this is something that you may want to like consider as an item maybe you want to add to your shop or a service that you want to advertise that you provide okay now the first thing i wrote down was hats okay now i did a, an embroidery happy hour about hats about i think it was like two or three fridays ago um so i'm not really going to touch on it too much okay but you know just the basics is hats are pretty inexpensive okay and it's something that is pretty popular however though one of the things that you want to think about is seasons all right there's going to be different um season times in the year where particular hats may be popular more popular than others and it might you know the the hats will target a different type of customer base that you're going to be embroidering for. And I'll give you an example, okay? When I mean seasons, right? Let's talk about Father's Day, all right? Sometimes men love to wear hats, okay? You know, at least a lot of them do. I know my dad was a big um, hat wearer. He used to love wearing his baseball hats. So sometimes what happens, you know, in those situations is, you know, Father's Day, baseball hats, 
big thing, okay? A lot of people like them. So what ends up happening is that will be a big seller during that season, okay? So people will look for hats that say dad on them or look for hats uh, for their golfing, okay? Because some, some, you know, some folks love to golf. Um, some people like to play tennis, um, you know, and they like to wear their hat. So that is a really good seller. And if you market it correctly at the right season, targeting for the right consumer, then you should be pretty good. And hats are pretty inexpensive. They're not that expensive, okay? So you can probably get a hat for about like maybe five or six dollars. And if you embroider it and you personalize it, that hat, you can actually turn it around and you can actually sell it for 25 to 30 or even 40 bucks, okay? Depending on the hat, because you know there's different types of hat they have the ones with the strap on the back some of the strap has leather some of it has the um plastic uh, hats then you have your fitted hats so you know i mean there's just so many different types of hats that are out there and you can offer a variety of these type of hats and sometimes because you know depending on the customer some people like the fitted some people like the adjustable strap so you know it's just something to think about, okay? Let's talk about another season when we're talking about hats, okay? Winter time. Winter time comes in, a lot of people like to wear their beanies, a lot of people like to wear knitted hats, okay? Like the women like to have the, the nice knitted hats. You can get those hats, pretty inexpensive also. And you can go ahead and you can initial them, you can put, you can create a patch, you can sew it on the hat. Um, there's just so many different ways that you can actually take a hat and make it very, very unique. And, you know, it can um, it can sell, you know, you can buy it really um, inexpensive and you can make a really good profit on those hats as well. And when it comes to the beanies, beanies can go through three different targets. OK, you can be targeting women with the beanies. You can do the men and you can also do the kids. OK, and kids are sometimes a pretty big thing. Now, just a little note, though, on the personalization when it comes to kits, all right? I know um, sometimes I see a lot of this comment go float around. And, you know, I think about it and I'm like, you know, they do have a point. A lot of times people, um, you know, they're trying to sell like a lot of things that are personalized with the actual child's name. There are parents out there, okay, that are very conscientious of that. They don't want their children walking around with their kid's name because unfortunately there is a lot of, you know, human trafficking and stuff like that. You don't want your child kidnapped or tricked or in some kind of way. So some parents are very conscientious of that and that is a big concern to them. Because of that, I'm not saying that you can't sell stuff with kids names on it because there's some parents that are okay with it because they have their children in some kind of control environment so they know that it's the risk is minimal right but i'm just i just want to put it out there that you can offer the same product and you don't have to actually put the child's name on it you can put a child's initial a lot of people for some reason they focus more on putting the full name but what i'm trying to say is I would give that option for the simple fact that you don't know if the consumer is going to shy away from your product because you are emphasizing a full name and not providing an option to just do initials, right? So just something to think about, okay? So I just something that I, I wanted to put out there. Um, and because when we're talking about hats, sometimes, you know, a lot of people, what they do is, especially with children, they have the beanies and, you know, they go to recess after recess, they get out of recess, they take off their clothes, their hats and everything like that. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of kids that have a beanie that's colored blue or a beanie that's a pink or, or whatever color, black or, and stuff. And what happens is hats get mixed up, just like people's book bags get mixed up and lunch bags and all that kind of stuff and everything. So... All I'm saying is, you know, um, if you, you want to offer the option to your consumers about the name, that's good. But I'm just saying, consider the other side and say, hey, what if this parent doesn't want a name and they want the initials? They may shy away from your product because they don't think you offer that option. So I'm just saying, you know, I just I just want to put it out there because 
if you cover both options, then I think you're golden because then what happens is the consumer, the consumer will say, I really like that hat and I really like the font that that person's using, but I don't want the whole name. But I see that they also offer the initial. So you could end up making a sale. So I'm just saying, okay? So hats, like I said, they are really big. They're inexpensive. You can buy them in bulk and all that kind of stuff. And you can make a really good profit on the hat. So now let's go on to um, the second thing, okay? Now let's talk about seasons for a little bit, all right? Now, you know, a lot of times when you are trying to sell products and you're also trying to, you know, embroider them and all that kind of stuff, you have to think about the time frame in where you are doing it and the people that are going to buy it. So you have to look at the demand. Is the demand out there at that moment, right? So like right now, we're in the month of August. So right now, people are really trying to gear up their kids to go back to school. A lot of times what happens is I find that people that are trying to sell stuff for embroidery, they get into this, oh, I'm going to be you know, creating these um, shirts and all that kind of stuff for the kids to go back to school. I see the shirts. I think they're great. They look really cute. I mean, lots of styles out there, but this is the thing that goes through my mind, okay? And this is just my opinion because I might piss off some of you guys, okay? So if I piss you off, oh, well, you know, I mean, you guys that have watched me know that I'm just flat out honest, okay? I'm not saying that I'm 100% right, but I'm just going to tell you how I see it, okay? Sometimes what happens is you can get into um, wanting to do a product that's oversaturated. Now, what I mean is that there is so much out there that what's going to happen is for you to be able to sell that product, you're going to have to, in some way, really make your so unique that it's going to stand out from all the rest, okay? So, you know, to me, it's just, you know, I know a lot of people like doing the shirts and everything, and I think that's great, and I think the shirts are really, really cute and stuff, and I have looked and seen some really beautiful ones, but the thing is, when you are in the business of trying to make money, um, you really want to try to, to, do something that is very, very unique and something that's going to make you stand out, right? So me personally, I just shy away from that area, okay? But we're in back to school season, right? So one of the things that I, I was saying was think about the season and what people are going to need, okay? Um, versus what they want. All right. Like for me, a, a shirt like that is is kind of like a maybe like an, a cute shirt for the child to wear on the first day of school. You know, and then after that, you know, maybe they'll wear it one or two times more. I don't know. You know, um, I I I know when Cardito was little, I really didn't care what he wore the first day of school. All I know is he wasn't naked. He was in sweatpants, sweatshirt, baseball hat. He was out the door. OK. But um, I really focused on the need, okay? So what um, when I say need, think about the, their book bags. Think about their lunch bags. Think about um, their pencil cases, okay? Um, you know, think about the supplies that the kids are getting, right? For, for them to go to school, all right? Book bags, you know... Um, those can be personalized, all right? Like I said, some parents may not be big on the name, but offer the initials, okay? Another thing also for you guys out there that have single needle machines and don't have a multi-needle machine, because you guys know I'm always thinking about both sides. I don't just want to just say, hey, you have a multi-needle machine, okay? I mean, not everybody's going to get a, a multi-needle. So I, when I think about things that, that everybody can do, I'm thinking both sides, okay? If you cannot fit a book bag or a lunch bag under your needle on a single needle machine, think about this, a tag, okay? A tag, all right? Making a patch and turning it into a tag, like a lug luggage tag, okay? And when, instead of embroidering on that book bag, you create a luggage tag with the child's name or the child's initials that they can go ahead and they can tie it to their book bag or their lunch bag and, and they don't lose it, okay? So you just got to come up with different ways of doing things, all right? Pencil cases are a really big thing, all right? If you go 
on um, Etsy. I, I went to one shop and I looked at their Etsy shop and um, because that's one of the things that I like to do. I like to research and I like to see what is selling. And I and I, I look at what's selling and I always ask the question, why is that item so hot? Like what is going on, right? That people are buying all this stuff, right? Like for instance, I'll give you an example, baby blankets, okay? Baby blankets in the spring, for some reason, that flies off the shelf. Why? Because a lot of times people are looking for baby blankets because kids are getting um, Christianed or baptized. And, um, you know, during the year, sometimes you'll make a couple of sales of baby blankets because, you know, children are being born, baby showers and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, a lot of times my dinner napkins fly off the shelf during the um, summertime because of weddings, okay? Now, a lot of times those those dinner napkins that I make, um, a lot of times those are pre-ordered. Those are people that actually come to me because they know that I make dinner napkins. They actually have a design and I get it digitized and then they'll like bring me like 100 dinner napkins and I'll embroider all dinner napkins for them and stuff like that. So those are like custom orders and stuff. But um. Think about the seasons, okay? Um, you know, gym bags, okay? Like I said, in border the gym bag. If you can't get it under the needle, there's nothing wrong with sewing a patch on there, creating a patch, creating a label or some kind of luggage tag or something like that, right? Um, what else do I have in there? Um, let me see. Um, and then the other thing too, something to think about, okay? Um, something that a lot of people, you know, I don't hear nobody mention this, okay? But I'm just going to put it out there. Daycares, okay? Everyone always focuses on the school, but nobody talks about the daycares. And I'm going to tell you something. Daycares is a good place for you to advertise your business. Um, you know, you can go in there and you can put your business card in there because I know I had my son in daycare. So he can I mean, poor Cardi you know, was the first kid in the in daycare and the last one out because I was a single mom. So I was the drop off and the pickup. So I had to like drop him off early as soon as they opened up, get on that bus, go to the job and then come back and pick him up. So anyway, but there's lots of kids in there and, you know, you can advertise, you know, because right now they're getting ready, you know, because there's going to be a lot of before and after care. You can go to the daycare and say, hey, I offer embroidery, put your business card out there and stuff. Ask them, do you have like a place where I can post stuff? Um, you know, take a picture of some of your items, right? Like, let's say you want to make a bag tags, right? You're going to make a bunch of bag tags. So create some samples, take a picture of it, create some flyers, ask, ask the daycare provider, can I put this in the front desk in case anyone want, is interested in reaching out to order? You'd be surprised that people will reach out to you. And at the very least, they will go to your website to see what are the products you offer, okay? I mean, and next thing you know, you end up with a whole bunch of customers that way. So just something to think about, okay? So we talked about the hats, which was number one. Number two is the season. Like right now, it's um, back to school time. And what I'm saying is, you know, from my perspective, when we're talking about back to school, I'm saying focus on the items that children are getting because they need it. All right. So to me, I would focus on the pencil cases. Those are big. If you guys can find like really cute pencil cases out there that are pretty inexpensive and you can embroider the name. All right. Or if some of you guys have a Cricut machine. All right. You don't have an embroidery machine then take some vinyl and you can cut out the name, put the vinyl right on top and stuff like that. You can do different pencil cases and everything. So you know, you could come up with some really cute designs, too, on the pencil cases. Um, if you're good at sewing, um, you know, create the embroidery designs, sew your own pencil cases together and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's really about creating something that is so unique that the consumer really can't find it anywhere else. And then next thing you know, they're like, oh, this is just so super cute and I got to have it. And then next thing you know, you got yourself a sale, okay? Um, the other thing also is um, I did tell you guys to advertise yourself. So make sure that you are doing that. If you have a business, make sure you register it on Google 
and Yelp and all that kind of stuff and everything. So that way you guys can um, get found because you would be surprised how many customers I get because all they did was go into Google and type in embroidery near me and my business popped up as like being like literally next door to that. And then next thing you know, I get a phone call and, and got myself an order, right? So anyway, just want to share all that stuff. So you guys know I'm all about sharing. Now let's talk about the third thing that I consider are kind of like good best sellers, all right? And if you guys did, didn't get what I would say before when we're talking best sellers, remember I mentioned hats, I mentioned pencil cases. Pencil cases sell book bags, lunch bags, okay? And, and when I'm talking about book bags and lunch bags, I'm not talking about you going out there and buying all these lunch bags and book bags, okay? I'm talking about you selling your embroidery skills okay so if you go out there and you let people know i can embroider these book bags i can embroider these lunch bags um i can you know i can create tags for you and stuff like that that's what's going to make you the money now the thing also is to be careful about one thing inventory okay and i see this a lot what happens is a lot of times people focus more on selling an actual product Okay, like, you know, oh, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of these hats, right? And the next thing you know, you're going to end up with a whole big inventory in your house, okay? When you are doing certain things, you got to be watchful of that, okay? Because what happens is that you're going to end up with, like, a warehouse at home. And if that's, if you're okay with that, then that's fine, you know? I mean, okay, me personally, I'm not okay with that. So I, you know, I buy really minimum and I buy them as samples and I just make sure that they're accessible, that when I need to buy them the fill in order, I can go and get them. Okay. So how, you know, that's kind of like kind of tricky too. So you just gotta, you, you just gotta really see how you can get your merchandise and all that kind of stuff. But let's go on to the other one. All right. Let's talk about pets. Okay. Um, winter's coming. All right. I can't believe we're in August already. Okay. Time is flying. So winter is coming and, you know, I live in Virginia. So, you know, I love the seasons. I love all the seasons. Okay. Um, you know, I, I don't think I will ever, you know, my mom, my, my mom, my sister, my immediate family all live in Florida. They love it there. I can't live there because it's, it's, just sun, right? But I love the season. I really do. I love the winter months. I love the cold weather. I love it when it snows. Um, I just love the change, right? So when you live in this type of an environment like winter, winter is a time where a lot of things, um, you know, things change, right? So Let's talk about the pets regarding that. Now, if you guys know, uh, I have a standard uh, golden doodle, right? Mellow, okay, who's napping right now. Great supervisor, right? He's napping. And um, my neighbors kind of laugh at me because every time I walk him, he's always got a new outfit on, okay? And yes, I embroider everything that he wears, okay? So this is his winner uh, sweater. Okay. And this is the front of it and it has his name. So one of the things that you will see a lot is that people that, you know, you know, well, I don't know, maybe I am the only one, I'm not sure, but, um, and thank goodness Mello isn't a girl. Cause she would probably have, well, he would have more outfits and stuff, but, he has sweaters, he even has shoes, he has boots, he has scarves, <laughs> he has his, he has an actual winter coat with a, a sewing scarf on it and a hood, he has a raincoat and all that kind of stuff. So whenever I get his clothes in, I always embroider his name on it in some, some way, right? Now, this one, I embroidered it kind of big. And some of the other ones, what I'll do is on the side, I will um, in script or in a small font, I will put his name on here, okay? But pets are a big market, okay? And um, one of the things that I do is I advertise more 
the embroidery services that I offer. And, you know, I do have my Etsy shop where I do sell products. Okay. So I don't want you to think that it's, you know, I just sell my services and that's it. I do sell products as well. Okay. Um, but I'm, you know, locally, it's mostly like my service, right? So when it comes to the pets, what ends up happening is because I walk Mellow and my neighbors see him and they always see him with his new sweater and stuff like that. And they see that he has his name on it. Next thing you know, the conversation starts as, oh my God, that's so cute. You know, I, you know, where did you get that? You know, where did you, you know, I, where did you buy the outfit that, that has his name on it? Well, once you get that question, well, what happens? Well, that's when I go around and say, oh, here, here's my business card. I'm an embroiderer. And if you have, you know, any outfits from your pet that you need to get embroidered, just give me a call. Next thing you know, boom, got an order right there. Okay. So, um, and the thing is too, is don't just think also about uh, animal clothes. Okay. Don't just think about, you know, their, um, because dogs are mostly the animal that I think gets uh, dressed. I've never seen anybody dress a cat. I, don't, I haven't seen that. Okay. So I don't think cats would kind of fall in that category because I haven't seen anybody. I mean, I saw somebody walking around in a stroller with a cat in it, which I thought was kind of cute, you know, but, um, but I've, I've never seen cats with clothes. But, um, you know, I, I do see, especially in the winter time. When I'm walking mellow, if it gets really, really cold out there, I know he always has his sweaters or his, his jacket on. If it's raining, he has his raincoat on. And I do see other, you know, other people walking their dogs with, with their um, jackets on as well. So just want to let you know, that is also a big seller, though. I got to tell you, a lot of people like having the clothes of pets uh, personalized. Now. Since I'm talking to you about selling the embroidery service, let me also tell you about certain things you can do that you can probably put on an Etsy shop and sell, okay? Bandanas, okay? There is different types of styles of bandanas, okay? Now, you can actually go and you can buy bandanas wholesale, or if you're good at sewing, you can create your own bandanas, and then you can go ahead and have them personalized. That's another cute thing you can sell. And those are, are big sellers, okay? Because a lot of people do actually like when the animals walk around with the names on it, okay? Um, the other thing is collars, okay? Collars, you can embroider them on a single needle machine. And you can do it on a multi-needle machine as well. Dog leashes, okay? A lot of times people like to embroider the dog leash um, you know, with their phone number, okay, um, and also the, the pet's name as well. So dog leashes is another thing that that's pretty big, okay? Um, what else did I put in here? Okay, uh, the other thing too, just to, to um, give you guys an idea, okay? Sometimes people don't like embroidering the dog leashes because they say the dog leashes are kind of like really thick or hard to embroider, stuff like that. Here's a little idea for you. A lot of times people mistake patches, okay? Well, not mistake it, but they kind of forget about patches, all right? Patches are something that I really encourage people to learn how to do. All right. For the simple reason is that it's just something that you can really use. Like I just talked to you guys a little bit. We we're talking about kids clothing and all that kind of stuff. Right. Well, you can put a patch on a hat. You can put a patch on this. OK, for do for dogs and animals. You know what I'm saying? And this is the other thing, too. If you get really good at putting patches. Sometimes people use patches instead of, you know, not instead, because they still put the dog tag on it, but it's another form of ID for the dog, right? So what you'll do is they'll make a little dog, a, a little patch, you put the little patch, you put the dog's name on it, and then you put the owner's phone number on it. Then what you can do is you take the patch and you go ahead and you just sew it on somewhere on the garment. Okay, because dogs do get lost, 
Okay, sometimes they break out their leashes and all that kind of stuff and everything. So, you know, and sometimes what happens is owners look for that kind of stuff. So just think about that. It's just something that, you know, um, you can create, not hard to do. If you have single needle or multi needle, you can do patches with the dog's name and the owner's phone number. And, you know, that could sell. That is a, that is going to be a pretty good seller because a lot of people do sometimes like the patches. The other thing too, also, when you are making those type of patches, this is something you can let your customers know as well. Okay. Let's say that the garment wears. Okay. And, um, you know, Mello's been wearing this for a very, very long time. I've already washed it like a hundred times. And now all of a sudden it's like the garment really has to go, but the patch probably will most likely still look pristine. They don't have to get a patch remade. They can easily remove the patch from the garment. They re-sew it on the new on the new item. So something to think about, okay? Something to think about, you know, that you may want to, uh, whew, you know, think about. But patches is something that, um, and, and it is a bestseller. Patches is a bestseller. And, you know, sometimes also when you are embroidering patches, people won't even, you know, they will just buy the patch. They sometimes don't even ask you to sew it on an item for them or something like that. They just want the patch and they'll go ahead and they'll put it in. So if you can do like personalized patches, that would be, that'd be pretty cool. You know, different styles, different colors and all that kind of stuff and everything. Just something to think about. Okay. All right. So another one is of best sellers that I got is jean jackets. Okay. I do have a girlfriend that she does a farmer's market. And one of the things that she does, okay, is she goes to, um, you know, like uh, Salvation Army and thrift shops and stuff. And all she does is she's looking for jean jackets and she likes the children's jean jackets. Now, I got my jean jacket right here, okay? Now, this is what she does, all right? She doesn't do the personalization or anything like that. If she finds some really beautiful designs, what she does is she goes and she embroiders the back. Now, I embroidered mine, but I actually did a Tesla logo on mine, okay? Um, no, I do not sell these because these are, you know, could be copyrighted, but I did Tesla on the back on mine. and. Um, one of the things that I do plan on doing is I'm going to continue to embroider on my jacket because now I actually want to embroider on the sleeve. One of the things that um, I have seen, and I have been looking into jean jackets, and one of the things that I noticed is that people are making like a bunch of different types of patches, okay, of different styles, um, different themes and stuff like that. And then what they're doing is they're taking those patches and they're sewing them on the jean jacket. So there's two things that you can actually do to really make a jean jacket pop. You can go ahead and you can just embroider right on the jean jacket, right? And then, or you can take patches and you can sew them off. So I saw one young lady and she had like a bunch of jean jackets and she did like patches all over she was selling one jacket and i'm going to tell you something they were selling okay she was selling for 200 to 250 dollars one jacket one jacket for two 250 and my girlfriend does it she does it for children's jackets okay she does it for children's jackets and i'm gonna tell you something she she does pretty good she does pretty good so, uh, but she doesn't do it like personalized or anything like that. What she does is she looks for some really cute designs, you know, stuff that, you know, like the mermaids and stuff like that. And then she'll put it on the back of the jacket. She does applique and all that kind of stuff. I mean, and she also adds rhinestones to her embroidery design. Okay. So it sometimes it really brings it out and it blings, you know, she's blinging out the jacket along with the embroidery and she does some beautiful, I mean, they're really gorgeous. And I'm telling you, she, she does it, you know, she has like a little setup and she goes every Sunday and it's, people look for her. They actually, they look for her. They actually look for her because they're, they're like, oh, I know this lady and she does these jean jackets and they're gorgeous. 
And she's made her name, she made a name for herself just doing that. So something to think about. Those are, it's, it's really big. The jean jacket's really big. Um, that would be more also, you have to think about also where you are, right? Because if you are like in Florida, right? <laughs> jean jackets are not going to sell because it's hot. It's hot all year round. Um, I believe you get some days um, towards uh, the end of the year where it's like winter months that the sun is not hitting that hard that maybe I I, I believe my, my mom, my sister tell me they, they walk around with some sweaters and stuff like that. But it may not be like jean jacket type of weather, right? So if you're in though in a real, you know, if you're in Florida or or a state that that the sun's out there all year round and stuff like that, you really don't have the winter. That may not be a, a good idea for you because the thing is they're not going to wear it, right? So you know, and it's one of the things also that I kind of emphasize also is when you are trying to sell stuff, you have to think about what it is that the public needs right it's not just a want thing okay yeah people do want things but they're gonna buy it because they're you know it's personalized and everything like that but is there an actual need for it okay which is why like when it comes to like the back to school i like to kind of focus on what is it that the children really need and then focus on how can i add my personal touch to those items that they need versus they want because you know to me the need is going to come first before the want that's just how i see it okay now what else uh do i have here all right let's talk about babies okay um i did touch a little bit about the blankets all right now to me i feel like the baby market is a hit and miss okay and it's just something that i want you guys to think about if you're thinking about going into this area okay there, you know, everybody loves to shop for a baby, okay? Because, I mean, it's a baby, right? It's cute, a little, and, there, and everybody likes to look at the little clothes and all that kind of stuff and everything. Like right now, I have a girlfriend that she just became a grandma. Um, her grandson was born about two days ago, so she's like super excited about it, and um, I'm excited for her. And, you know, I went and I got like a whole bunch of onesies and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to, you know, maybe I'll, I'll embroider some really cute like onesies, right? So what happens to me, you know, it's like you look at these little things and you're like, oh, they're so cute, you know? So, and right away, it's really easy to get caught up in this because of the cuteness, right? Um, and I will say this though, you know, a lot of times I feel like some of the baby the baby items are mostly impulse buying. That's how I see it, especially when it comes to new parents. Because I know um, it's it's like everybody wants their kid to look cute. Everybody wants their kid to have nothing but the best or something unique, special, right? So knowing that, okay, knowing that that is what the mothers and that's what people are trying to go for, when you are trying to make those best seller items in this type of market for babies, you have to kind of focus on, all right, I have to make it somehow so special that it's something that not only the consumer is going to want or that the mother's going to need as well, but it has to be really very unique that it's, you know, while you're competing with other people that are also trying to sell, how is yours going to be so, so unique that the consumer can't resist getting that, okay? Um, you know, like for instance, the baby blankets, right? There are a lot of different baby blankets out there, okay? Now, like right now, you know, the Herloom baby blanket seems to be very, very popular. However, though, you know, you gotta remember everything in life goes through little phases, right? So right now it's a little popular, but I'm sure, pretty, you know, there's lots of, of other blankets out there, right? So, you know, to me, it's like, I do the bit, the heirloom blankets, but I also do other blankets as well. So you have to kind of like, you know, think about that. Not everybody's going to be into that. Some people will be into blankets that are softer. Maybe they want them fluffier. Maybe they want them thinner, you know, 
maybe they don't, you know, because they are thick. These these blankets are kind of thick. For those of you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about these blankets, okay? These are kind of heavy. They are kind of thick. So in the wintertime, this might be okay. In the summertime, I think it might not, okay? So this is a new design that I'm coming out with. And I started doing um, some baptism styles too. And that's another thing too, okay? <laughs> let's, let's talk about, you know, talking about seasons, right? Um, you know, you, sometimes you got to look at the calendar, look what's going on, or, and you have to try to come up with what is it that you think the people out there are going to want during that time, you know? So babies can be all year round, right? Because every, everybody's having babies all the time, right? And there's so many things that you can do for the baby, right? You can do the blanket, you can do the bibs, you can do the, they call the onesies or the body suits, okay? Because, you know, onesies is a, a term that's copyrighted. And I, I believe it's copyrighted by Gerber, right? Um, let's see, what else I got in here? So, uh, yeah, I got the babies, the the bibs and all that kind of stuff. So the only thing that I that I say about that area is, it's, it's like I said, it's a hit and miss, all right? Um, you have to kind of... Look to see what's out there, what's selling, what seems to be hot, and then see how you can put your personal touch in there so that you can kind of get in the game. That's just how I kind of see it. Um, it can be oversaturated, but at the same time, if you really have that unique design that will really pop, you may be okay. You know, um, you know, and it's just something that you got to really look at and think about and try it out um you know sometimes you'd be surprised too okay there have been times when i have created something a certain design and i thought it was going to be the hottest thing and next thing you know i don't sell not one and then there's other designs that i just i don't know i just wasn't in the mood you know <laughs> but i created it and then i said oh what the hell let me put it out there and then before you know it i'm bestseller Okay, so and and I'm I'm making tons of it. So you just never know. So, you know, just stuff to really just think about, you know, and and you know, focus on this stuff. So let me see. I want to make sure I covered mostly everything. Talk to you guys about the hats. They're pretty inexpensive and stuff. Um, women hats in the summer, okay. You know, in the summertime, women like to wear those little sun hats and stuff like that. You may, you know want to do that the winter time i thought about the beanies holidays like father's day think about golfers think about the sports you know um the children hats you know children are pretty big on the beanies though um i don't know about the baseball hats i know that some kids wear baseball hats and some kids don't i do see the kids wear a lot more of the beanies than the baseball hats that that's just something that I've observed. I noticed that the kids kind of lean more on the beanie side. Okay. Um, you know, the back to school, you know, that's, that's happening right now. Everybody's getting ready for the back to school stuff. Pencil cases are hot. Okay. That's just something that's very inexpensive also. Okay. You can buy pencil cases and then you can just embroider the person's name on it or their initials. All right. Um, you know, make sure also that because, you know, everybody's going back to school and stuff like that, see, like I said, see if you go to a daycare um, and all that kind of stuff. Another thing, too, just popped up my my mind, okay, because we're, we're talking about kids, all right? Let's flip over to the other side. Let's talk about the elderly, okay? As, you know, as people are getting older and stuff like that, um, one of the things that I that I noticed, I was talking to my girlfriend about this. It's just something that popped in my head, and I want to share this with you guys before I forget, okay? Because I'm getting up there myself, all right? Um, what do you call me and my girlfriend were talking about sewing patterns, and one of the things that she told me was that she came across a sewing pattern for walkers okay um some people have like you know i guess when they get older and they have difficulties getting up and stuff like that and walking around um because my dad used a, a walker um you know i think the last couple of weeks um you know before he passed and um 
you know, but I know this with the walkers and stuff, the sewing pattern was, it was like a, a bag or something like that, that you snap. So that way the person can carry their personal items while they're walking. And um, I saw that sewing pattern and she was talking to me about it. And she was like, you know, she was like, that is probably a very good market to hit. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I think you are absolutely right. And especially with Christmas coming up, okay, if if you have someone who is using a walker, um, it's a really cute way to decorate their walker, okay? So it's like a little organizer. It's like an organizer that they have in there. And um, you can personalize it. You can put their, you can border their name on it. Um, so if you're good at sewing, this is something that I would think about. And this is the other thing too. If you live close by an assistant, uh, assistant living facility or something like that, you know, or um, we even if you go to your church or something like that, you if you make them, you can advertise that you have these. OK, and I bet you they will sell like crazy. I, I, I mean, me and her were talking about it and I was like, you know what? I could see that. I can truly see that. I, cause I told her, I said, shoot, if I ever got old or whatever, and I, and I had a walker, well, I know I'll get old, you know, it's just a matter of time. I'll get there. But I know one thing, if I, when I have my walker, I'm going to make myself one. I'm going to make my own little organizer and stuff like that, you know? So I can see one doing for for me, you know, so I'm kind of like, okay, so, you know, just ready to share that because, you know, we're talking about best sell. So I'm trying to tell, I'm trying to give you guys ideas of, you know, unique stuff that you could make that can really bring a profit for you. Okay. Now the Walker idea, I know, you, you know, of course you're going to have to know how to sell, right. Um, and, and me, I'm going to have to practice on my sewing. Uh, but if you know how to sew, I would recommend going to Joann's and picking up that sewing pattern and but do it when they're $1.99. Don't pay full price. OK, I think they do the sewing patterns for $1.99. I think it's like every I, I know they do at least once a month. Maybe it's once a month or something like that. But they do advertise. So when you get the little flyer. From Joanne's, look for it where it says sewing patterns are $1.99. Then you go ahead and you buy it then. Don't pay full price for it, okay? Because you guys know that I, I don't like it when you guys be paying full price for anything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll tell you guys where to get the good stuff. So, um, yeah. So, just think about that. And then also, um, I do want to just, I wanted to share that because I know that would be a bestseller. And it would be a bestseller during the Christmas season, Okay. Mother's Day, because that's not that's more for women. I don't think I don't see men unless you're so good that you would probably, you know, you if, if you would do it for a guy, I would say you would probably use the solid color. You wouldn't do anything with a pattern like flowery, anything like that. Or or if you were really, really good, you could do it with leather. And if you sew it with leather, that. I mean, it'll probably be a little expensive because of all the ma on the material and stuff like that. But if they wanted to give it to their dad or their uncle or something like that, I could see a guy saying, oh, I would want that. Or you could modify the design a little bit to make it more manly. Just say, you know, because I'm sure they got stuff they want to carry too, you know, a little book or something like that, you know. So it's just something to think about and stuff. So um, let me see, what else did I have here? Okay. Um, and really think about guys, think about patches. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, I noticed that a lot of people, what they're doing, and it's my, and, and, and me as well. I, I mean, I'm doing the same thing, you know. Um, you know, I, I notice a lot of people, what they do is they just they just do the embroidery directly on the product. And I got that. Um, I did post a video though, um, I think it was like last week or the week before where i had a customer who told me that they wanted me to embroider their logo directly on um on a vest and i did that i i wasn't happy about doing it because i i knew that the type of material that they were using and the fonts were so small 
that I knew that that was not going to be the best option. So I, you know, and, and they were kind of like, don't worry about it. It's fine. This is what I want. And I'm like, okay. So I was like, all right. So I did it. But when I gave it to them, what I also did was I, I created their logo and I actually put it on a patch. And I did two patches. And then I said, look, this is what you asked. This is what you got. This is what it looks like. But what I was trying to tell you was if you do the patch, Look how nice cleaner and, and easier it is to read. And I could just sew it right there for you. Next thing you know, they like the patch. So patches, you know, are something that, you know, some people like them a lot and they, and they love patches. But then you have the other side of some folks, they shy away from patches because they don't think they're going to look good. Okay. Um, so, but my whole thing is, you know, there are times when you're going to be in, you know, get a product and, and, you know, like book bags or lunch bags, or, you know, you may not want to sew directly on the item. Okay. Because it's going to be difficult to hoop or, or maybe you don't want to make a mistake on that item. Cause sometimes some of these bags can be kind of expensive. Patches can be a very good option. Okay. It can be a really good option. And one of the things that I tell people, especially when I do uh, the patches as tags for book bags and everything is that I tell them, I said, you know, the patch can actually outlive the item. Because what I mean by that is if I make a patch for a book bag and the book bag after the school year is already like scratched up, tore up, you know, that kind of stuff, the patch probably survived. And if it survived, you can just take that patch and you can just put it on the next item. Okay. So just think about that. You know, it's like just stuff that, you know, when, you know, people kind of like choices. That's just how I kind of look at it. And, and they like things that they can reuse, right? If you, if you go ahead and, and you embroider a book bag, then once that book bag gets all scratched up and everything, well, the embroidery is not reusable, right? But if they, if you create it on a patch and you, you make it like a luggage tag or something like that, it's reusable as long as they didn't damage the actual tag. So that can be really be something that's very that can be attracted to the customer and people may like that. You'd be surprised. And you can make some really cute patches. I don't know if I got one here and stuff. I was messing around. Like, okay, here I have some. Here you go. Like um See, this is a patch that I made. Okay, so like, let's say, you know, um, you have like a little girl or something like that. And you can make these with a little circle, okay? You can make them where you can have like a little, a little circle in here and then you can just tie it or you can make like a little tab and then you can snap it. You can snap it and stuff like that. But this is, this is a patch, okay, that I created. And, you know, you can just create these little, things and then let me see here's another one and stuff and i had another one but um i sent it to my sister see this is another one you can make and it doesn't have to be this big okay and that's another thing that i want to emphasize to you guys you know I, I i made these big ones patches can be made in any size okay so you can actually take a patch and you can make it half this size and you can put the person's name on it or initials or whatever you know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, I'm just showing you these as, as examples of stuff that you can do, but they don't have to be this big. They don't have to be this style. You you can, you know, you can get really creative with patches and, and there's just so many things you can do with the patches. You know, I mean, they really, there there is. And sometimes I feel like people are starting to shy away from the patches. And, and I'm thinking to me, I'm like, Okay, I could see it, but then at the same time, it, it could be kind of like a mistake too because patches are something that can really last a really long time. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's a it's a personal choice, really. It really is. It's a personal choice. Some people don't want the patches on. They just don't like it. They don't like the edging or something like that. And you know, you can do a lot. You can change the edging. It doesn't have to be thick. You can make a thin edge and stuff like that you know you just got to play around with it and everything and see you know what it is that the customer kind of wants okay and stuff so um let me see so the last one i was talking about was with the babies 
were like, you know, babies are good sellers. Okay. You know, the only thing that I caution though about that area is just that it is a lot of competition out there. Okay. Um, so if you're thinking about doing bibs, you know, you got to see what is out there with the bibs and then you got to see how is your bib going to be different from the others, right? Like, are you going to change the shape of the bib? Okay, so there's an idea, right? A lot of times people just have that same shape, right? And now I'm seeing some that are doing like the triangle, okay? That's, that's a cool idea. But you know what? Do you need to do your bib as a triangle? Do you have to do it as a round shape? No, you can make it any kind of shape, you know? Just be creative and stuff like that, or add some trim to your to your uh, bib. Um, you know, put some applique on there. Um, you know, there's so many things you can do. There's just so many different things you can do, different materials and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So you know, you just gotta you gotta look at what it is that the they're offering on the on the baby side, and you just gotta see how is yours going to be so unique that people that you know they're they're looking for a need right which is the bib the bib is a need but then after after they they see they what their need then they're going to start looking at style right and how it's embroidered and all that kind of stuff so then you're going to have to focus on you know okay I'm, I'm satisfying that need but how am i going to be distinguished from everyone else right that is out there right so you want to look at what's selling, what designs, and then how you're going to make it so that yours is so unique that people are going to say, wait a minute, I want that bib. You know, I'm looking for a bib, but now I want that bib because that bib is cuter, it's nicer, um, it's more, you know, is it bigger and stuff like that? And that's the other thing too. You know, you got to look at the different sizes and stuff. And this chair's um, starting to get to me. I got to um, reposter my chair. So, um, yeah, and then the blankets, different types of blankets. Think about pillows also, you know, um, pillowcases for babies, you know. Think about um, things that, you know, because if you want to get into the baby area, right? Let's say that's, you, you, you know, that, like I keep saying, think about what is not being tapped, okay? What is it that, that people could use, but that's not being tapped and oversaturated? Now, I just gave you guys an idea of pillowcases, right? Um, now, they have so many different types, right? A lot of times, um, you know, you've seen they have the pillowcases for these, right? Well, get unique. Can you sew your own pillowcases and then embroider those pillowcases and you make them so unique that, you know, it, it'll be really cute in the the crib and stuff like that. It's just something to think about. Something to think about, you know, how can you make that pillowcase so different? Same thing, um, scenario is like when I was telling you about the bibs, how are you going to make those bibs so different? Um, the ones, the, the but you know, I keep saying onesies because, but you can't really say that. The body suits, how are you going to make them different? Um, you know, the baby outfits, uh, they got the little baby caps, um, you know, how are you going to make that different? Are you going to add like a little bow, you know, for the girls? Or are you going to do something for the boys? Maybe add a little trim, something like that to make them different, you know, to give it a different style. Um, what other things they have? Uh, they have, uh, oh, here's an, an idea. Here's an idea. Um, I remember with Cardito, he had, um, you know, the pacifier. Right. And then the pacifier, like pacifier holder, or it's like the little rope where it's like you kind of like pin it on their clothes and then like it, it's tied to their pacifier. And then like, you know, in case the baby accidentally drops it out and stuff, they don't like drop it on the floor or stuff like that because it's kind of like, Kang, maybe you can make a pacifier. I don't know if they call pacifier holders. I don't know what the name is, but I think you guys know what I'm talking about. If you could create something like that where it's like unique and you can like personalize it in some kind of way or something like that or make it really cute, um, that could be a good seller, okay? Um, because it's something that people need, okay? It's something that people need and then you, you, you're, you're, you're taking something that, that they need and you're just spicing it up to make it really cute so that way they want it. I think you guys get in the theme that I'm kind of saying, okay? Look at need, 
try to fill that need and then try to make it and design it in such a way that they're going to not only need it, but want it as well. I think that's kind of like where I'm going here. Okay. You guys got it? Hint, hint. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So there's like so many different things. Baby bags, diaper bags. Mom needs the diaper bags, right? Um, but that could be a little hard because you, if you, if you, especially if you're sewing your own diaper bag and stuff like that, but you can buy some diaper bags, you can add embellishments to it, you know, like you can embroider it, um, the handle, embroider the handle, stuff like that. Uh, you know, make those kind of cute too. Talk about handles also. This just popped in my mind as well, okay? A uh, while ago, I did a video where I, you know, I took a school bag and on the school bag, what I did on the actual sleeve of the school bag, I embroidered the name. Well, um, remember I was talking patches, okay? Create a patch. Instead of embroidering on the actual sleeve of that book bag, sew the patch on. That way when the book bag goes bad, all they have to do is just take a seam ripper, take the uh, patch off, and then you sew it on the new bag. I'm just saying. Little, you know, little things you could think about and stuff. Um, and then you know how I talked about jean jackets, okay? Embroidering jean jackets, making them special and everything. Who said it has to be a jean jacket? It doesn't have to be a jean jacket. It could be a raincoat. Um, if you have uh, folks out there that are doing uh, swim team, swim, um, you know, sports and stuff like that, sometimes what happens is a lot of them have like their uniform, right? And everybody has like the same jacket, same whatever, right? I've had actually um, folks come to me and say, hey, you know, uh, my my daughter's uh, swim jacket, can you put her name? Can you embroider her name or her initials on it, stuff like that? And I've done that, you know, but that's the embroidery services though, you know, and stuff. So, but, you know, um, you know, and this is the other thing too. Um, something that I just, uh, not that I, I came across, cause I kind of knew it, but I saw a video of a young lady where she was um, kind of like down in a way because she said she wanted to start an embroidery business and it wasn't really going well, right? And she did like an online shop and people weren't really buying, right? And then she said what happened was that um, someone recommended her services for a company to create like company shirts and stuff like that. So next thing you know, she's getting a lot of local sales. So something that I just want to share is that you know, a lot of times people, you know, they they have a perception that when you get when you have an embroidery business, that a lot of the business is really going to come online. I say yeah, but at the same time, I say no. Okay, it's it's kind of like a little balance. Okay, if you really want to do well, my my recommendation is you got to focus on both, and. A lot of times what you're going to find is, especially even in my case, I do find that I do well on my online sales. Don't get me wrong. Um, the, the shop does extremely well. It really does. But I noticed that my local sales do so much more. Okay. I get so much that sometimes um, it can get a little overwhelming because my local sales, um, I have these, I have orders of all types. I have small business owners that are local, and sometimes what happens is they need 50 shirts, 30 shirts, 40 shirts, or 100, right? And it's, a, it's fine. I can do that. And then I also have the local customers that are getting married and all that kind of stuff, and they want their dinner napkins, and the dinner napkins are, they're a lot, <laughs> you know, but they're small, they're small count stitches, so, you know. So it can get overwhelming because it's I'm on, I'm on just one person. And at the same time that I'm dealing with my local orders, I also have to deal with my online orders. And um, I find personally that local orders take up a lot more of your time than online orders. And I'm going to tell you why. Because online orders, you have your listing, right? And on the listing, usually it's like the person knows what they're going to get. 
right? The, it's, it's very self-explanatory. So it's like, this is the product. This is what I'm offering. And these are your options for customization. So the customer kind of just goes online, orders what they want, and then they specify the customization that they want. And then that's it. So there really is very little interaction between you and the customer online, okay? Unless they go ahead and they send you an email and they ask you a question before purchasing and stuff like that. So sometimes the conversations isn't like that, that much, right? So it's usually the orders in, I print it out and I know exactly what it is that they want and I just go ahead, make it, package it up, ship it out. Local orders are kind of different. They're handled very, very differently, okay? First of all, you're meeting with people face-to-face. -face. And then what ends up happening is you got to have that conversation with them. And the conversation is going to entail a lot of questions. So to me, local orders are more time-consuming, okay? When they come to you, a lot of times the questions are, you know, it could be a whole bunch, right? Some Sometimes you have somebody that will come out and, oh, thank you, Rita, for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, you know, sometimes they'll somebody will come to you and then what they'll do is they'll, they'll, they know exactly what they want. That can be kind of quick, all right? But then other times you'll have people that they have an idea, but somehow you're going to have to help them. You're going to have to help them make the decision because they, they know they want embroidery, but they don't know too much about embroidery. So as you as the embroiderer has to have that conversation with them and you have to take the time to educate them because a lot of times they don't know about different types of fabric. Mm -hmm. They don't know about what is a light design versus a very dense design. They don't know about the different um types of weight of thread. They don't know about the different sizes of needle. That is, that's something that you know. So a lot of times, you know, I do hear people say, oh, I don't like dealing with local orders and stuff like that. And, and that's fine. That's fine. But the thing is, when you do do that, the only thing is you're kind of shutting out um, opportunities. That's just how I see it. Okay. But if that's, if that's how you want to rope, that's okay too. And that is one of the good things about running your own business. You call the shots. You run the shop how you see works for you, okay? Because some people have different personalities, okay? Some people are introverts and they just really don't feel comfortable um, talking with a bunch of different people, okay? I, I'm different, okay? I mean, my sister can tell you. I mean, and my cousin Betty kind of sometimes laughs because she's like, she kind of laughs because when me and her hang out and I and I go to a wherever, I'll walk into the room and, and I don't have a problem sitting and going, hi, how are you? <laughs> just start a conversation with anybody. So it's just a different personality. I'm just different, right? So sometimes, you know, it, it, like I said, you know, for me, I, I have absolutely no problem doing local sales because I love meeting people. I love talking to people. Um, so to me, it's natural, right? So when people come to my home and, and they say, Hey, can you do this or that, whatever? Not a problem. I, I know. And, and I like to listen to them and I, and I don't have a problem sitting there and educating them either and letting them know, like a perfect example is when I had to do the patches, right? Even though I talked to the customer and I said, I don't really, I, I don't really believe that's going to come out looking the way you expected it. And I wanted to make sure they were aware of that. And they were like, no, no, it's okay. I'll be fine with it. Even though I know they said they would be fine with it, I wasn't going to be fine with this, which is why I went ahead and I created the patches so they could have that option. And then at the same time, it kind of like showed them that this is what I mean. Okay. Because you got to remember also, sometimes we make mistakes, right? There are times when you're in bordering and you think something's going to look fantastic, Right. And then when you're done, oh, thank you, Jenny, for the shoe for shot. I appreciate it. You know, you sometimes think that something's going to look fantastic. You stick it in your machine and then you pull it out and then you look at it. You're like, oh, crap, this doesn't look right. Right. So customers don't know, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes you're not even going to know. OK, Un unless you try that, it comes with all with experience. OK, so especially, you know, and, and I guess the reason why I'm mentioning this right now because i know those experienced embroiderers they know all this but if you're new okay i don't want anyone to feel discouraged or feel like oh my god i'm screwing up or 
you're not. You're not screwing up. You're learning, okay? And trust me, the, the, the folks that have been embroidering for a lot of years and have been embroidering for quite some time, they've made these mistakes and that's how they learned, okay? That's how I know, okay? Because believe me, in the past, I used the wrong type of fabric with the wrong type of style of font. And I ended up learning the hard way that sometimes threads sink into certain fabrics, which is why I do the videos on the knockdown stitches and all that kind of stuff and everything so that you guys can learn. Okay. So anyway, guys, um, that is the topic because I know I'm already over. I'm at, I'm an hour and 10 minutes over. Okay. So, but I wanted to share some of the things for you guys to think about that could be best sellers. Okay. So I hope you guys weren't thinking about like, I was going to come out and say, Hey, um, sell this. No, I want you guys, my whole thing is I want to encourage you guys to not just think about a product, but also think about how you're going to add your touch. Okay. Because this is the thing it, in, in embroidery, in any type of business. Okay. In any type of business, just pick anything. All right. Like, um, all right, let's talk coffee. Okay. I just did um, embroidery for a small business here. They opened up a coffee shop called uh, Coffee uh, 1971. And um, cute little place. I, I went there today to buy my first cup of coffee from there. And um, I made their their um, aprons and stuff. And um, I will tell you, um, let's say you, you want to open up a coffee shop, okay? You have to think about what is going to be so special about your coffee that you're going to be competing with Starbucks and all these other coffee makers that are out there, okay? So you're going to have to be thinking the same way when you start thinking about how you're going to do your best sellers for your shop, okay? So I'm just I'm just trying to share different things for you to think about so that you can create your, your success, all right? So, you know, I mean, so I just, gonna, you know, I did mention six things. I'm just going to recap, okay? Talked about hats. Okay, hats are very good sellers. All right. And now you're just gonna have to see how are you gonna put your special touch on these hats that they're gonna sell. Okay. Seasonal, um, back to school. Okay, back to school's here. All right. You know, there's gonna be a lot of competition out there. Okay. Like I said, a lot of people do the shirt thing, and I think that's great. But the thing is, I want you guys to think beyond the shirts, okay? Not just shirts, think beyond the shirt. What else can you do? with your embroidery skills to take it beyond that, okay? Because you want to sell, you want to make money, right? So you you want to fill a need for, for the customers out there, okay? So, um, book, I, and I mentioned the pencil cases, book bags, lunch bags, um, you know, uh, gym bags, jackets, you guys got it, right? Okay, and I even talked to you guys about places that you can go and advertise, right? Think about the daycares, think about the schools, think about your churches, organizations, right? If you guys are in a book club, create these book, uh, uh, what you call it? bookmarks. Think about bookmarks. Um, you know, think about uh, little tote bags to carry your books, okay? You know, think about think about the your targeted, okay? First, think about who you want to target. And, and, you know, I feel kind of bad saying target because I feel like, you know, like we're out to like get people. It's not getting people. <laughs> think about who you want to serve. Let's say it like that, okay? Who do we want to service, okay? Think about what is it that they need and then how can you take your, your embroidery skills and fill that need for them? Okay, give them something that's going to be so special, spectacular that they're going to love it. Okay, um, and then I, then I mentioned pets. Okay, pets is a big thing, especially dogs. Okay, dogs, they got they got the clothes, they got the leashes, they got the collars. You can do tags, patches for dogs. We talked about the patches. Okay, I did emphasize the patches. All right, we talked about jean jackets. Um, jean jackets are pretty big. And let me tell you something. Um, it's not just for girls. All right. Think about jean jackets for boys. Boys like their jean jackets too. So I'm just saying, think about that. Okay. 
and stuff. And then we did talk about the babies. And, and you guys know how I feel about the babies. I like the babies, don't get me wrong, but it's it can be a hit and miss thing because um, a lot of competition out there, okay? So there is a lot of competition out there. So, you know, when you're thinking about the babies, um, a lot of times things are the cute stuff, but um, see if you could focus a little bit, like find an area of a need, right? Like when I was talking about the thing that holds the pacifier or, you know, the bib, how how can you make the bib uh, different, right? The, the body suits, you know, uh, people buy them by the dozens, the body suits, um, you know, uh, I talked about the diaper bag, um, you know, uh, I know they got the car seats, but I don't know if they got car seat covers or something like that. Can you make car seat covers or can you get car seat covers and then maybe personalize them in some way? Um, strollers. There you go. There's another one. Um, they got those little umbrella strollers. I remember I used to have one for car. You know, I don't know if they still use those. I haven't seen them in a while. I'm sure they probably still have them, but Maybe they have a different style of stroller. I don't know. Okay, Cardi, my son right now is going to turn 23. So it's been a long time since I had a baby in my life. So I don't know. Uh, play mats. There you go. Here's another idea. Okay, now that now my my, my brain is spinning, okay? Um, they have these little play mats that, you know, or I don't know if they call them play rugs or something like that where they lay the baby down and stuff like that, um, you know, those are, are, are good, are good. And a lot of parents like those because they don't just want to put a baby on a floor. Right. Cause I remember I used to take a blanket and lay it on the ground and then I would have Carlito on there. And it was like little play mats and stuff like that. Think about that. Think about, uh, the little toy. There's a, uh, what do they call those? They have these little, these little uh, toys, right? And um, it's like a little security blanket or something like that. Um, Cardino used to walk around with a, a blanket, but now they have these like little um, toys that they fill. It's like a little elephant. So I some are a little monkey or, uh, you know, a cat or a bunny or a little bear and stuff like that. And then they put the little name on the side. Um, another thing too, that is pretty popular too, but this is time consuming. All right, I was, I'm gonna show you guys. This is a little time consuming though. Um, I make these and these sell a lot. Um, if you have a, um, a friend, uh, this is an embroidered baseball, okay? And I made this for my son. Um, so it has his name on it, okay? And then it has, like, the time he was born, um, you know, what he weighed, his birth date, okay? So I made this. Um, I do have a video on the channel on how to do this step by step, okay? It's not hard. All right, it is not hard. Um, however, this is very time consuming. I want to tell you that right up front. This is not something that I would advertise and say, oh, I can have this done for you in a day or two. Okay. Um, you know, this this involves actually taking the baseball, cutting it out, peeling the skin off, and bordering the skin and putting it back together and then hand sewing the baseball back together. Okay, you can't sew this on the machine or anything like that. Um, I actually have to hand sew this back together. And you gotta hand sew it in such a way that it looks like it was never taken apart, okay? This, um, it, this is embroidered, okay? I embroider this. There are several different ways that people make this, okay? Some people actually use heat vinyl transfer and they put it on there. I don't like the heat vinyl transfer because the heat vinyl transfer can peel, okay? Um, some people actually take this and they'll put this like in a little baseball case and stuff like that. Um, this is a seller, but if you go on Etsy, you will find that a lot of people do sell them. And you will see that a lot of people, what they do is they use the heat vinyl transfer to go ahead and do that because taking this apart and putting it back together is a lot of work, okay? So it's just something that uh, it, it is a seller, it is. 
Um, and let me tell you, people take part basketballs, footballs, soccer balls. They they do that and they embroider them. Okay. Now, have I done those other balls? No, I haven't. Um, I've just done the baseball. And I'm okay with just doing the baseball. I have thought about trying it on the basketball because my son loves to play basketball. So I was thinking of doing one for him. But um, the thing is, um, when I was looking at the process, you have to use an exacto knife, I believe, and to peel off the skin of the basketball. And then you have to get some special glue because you have to glue the basketball back together. And basketballs can be very expensive. They're, I think they're about like 20 bucks a pop. So these baseballs are a little more affordable because, you know, I buy them by the case like this. Okay. So I get about eight, eight of them in here. So it, it doesn't, it's not that bad. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think it's like 20 bucks or maybe it's $15. I don't, I don't remember. I have to go and get more because I only got one left. But, um, you know, it, it is affordable. I mean, it's, it's, it's affordable. It's not that bad. Um, and the thing is, when you go to resell the baseball, you can kind of sell it for quite some, you know, a, a pretty good amount. So it's not that bad. So, um, you know, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I forgot to mention the baseballs. Um, yeah, so those are good sellers too. The only thing, like I said, very time consuming. That's the only thing, you know, I'm not saying it's, you know, you shouldn't do it. If you do offer that, make sure that you put at least like a week or two weeks to let them know that, you know, it takes about that much. And if you get it done sooner, awesome. Get it done sooner, put it in the mail and ship it out. And believe me, you'll get a good review because they're going to be like, oh my God, I wasn't expecting it for two weeks and I got it right away. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, it is a lot of work. So, you know, and if you have other orders, um, yeah, that can, hmm, that can get you. So anyway, guys, I am going to go through the chat and say hi to all you guys. And I hope you guys like today's topic. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah. So let's say hi to everybody. Hey, Miriam, how are you doing? Hey, Crafty Puerto Rican, how are you? Hey, Walk by Faith. Hey, Miss Jane, um, LeBron James, how are you? Hey, Miss Jones, how you doing? Happy Friday. Hey, Sassy, I see Jackie, Judy, Rhonda, how you doing? Hey, Veronica, Iris, Becky. Hey, Kim, how are you? Sharon, Iris, Yoki, Miss Morrison, how are you? Welcome. Hey, Sarah, how you doing? And if you guys have questions or want to even share what is your best seller in the chat, go ahead and please share it and stuff. Because like I said, this is all about sharing and learning and all that kind of stuff. So, hey, Glenda. Hey, Marina, how are you? I see Robin and Deborah. Hey, Kelly, Karen, Allison. I see Eartha. Sharon, how are you? Becky, I see. Um, let me see. Haven't gotten the nerve to sell yet. I make it and give it to friends and family. They're encouraging me to sell, but haven't worked up the courage. You will get there, um, Marina. Just build on your skill. Just build on your skill. And I, you know what? Um, I think a lot of us started that way. Honestly, I think a lot of us started that way. I mean, because I know me personally, I was just doing things for me. Okay. Because I'm so, like, so like, you know, well, I know the right word is frugal, but look, come on, let's be honest. I'm cheap. Okay. <laughs> I'm real cheap. So it's like, I would see things in stores and I was like, oh, I want that. But I was not willing to pay $75, $80. And I was like, wait a minute, I can do that. I think I can do that. So I would go ahead and I would try to make things myself. And that's how I ended up getting into it. And when I started making it to myself, like you, where you're saying, you know, you make it to give to friends and all that kind of stuff, that's what I was doing too. Because what ends up happening is you do save money. That's You save money doing that. Because a lot of times me and my friends you know, me and my husband would go like to a friend's house for a dinner party or something like that, right? 
And a lot of times we would bring a bottle of wine. So what I would do is I would create a basket where I would have a bottle of wine in there. And then I would take two wine glasses and I would etch their name on the wine glasses. And then I would embroider a kitchen towel and I would do like a gift basket. So if you really think about it, if you would go online and you would buy something like that, you're probably going to spend close to $100, right? Because you're talking about a personalized, two personalized wine glasses, a bottle of wine, the actual basket, and then a, a personalized kitchen towel, right? And then sometimes what I would do other, you know, other times I'll put like the cheese and the crackers in there. Or I would do like dinner napkins and embroider the dinner napkins with their initials and all that kind of stuff. So there's just so many things you can do. And you can make like the most awesome gifts, right? So every time me and my husband would go, people would be like, oh my God, it was like, they would be blown away. So you save money like that because you like, you can give the most awesome gifts and you didn't end up spending like an arm and a leg because everybody loved the wine glasses and little did they know those wine glasses came from Walmart and I didn't even spend a dollar because they, it, I, I, well, I don't know how much they are now, but they were like 98 cents. Okay. So I would take the wine glasses that were 98 cents just by two. So it was just $2. And then I would use my Cricut machine and I would create the template and I would etch the name with etching cream on it. And then next thing you know, they got like wine glasses with their name on it, which they loved. And then I would just take a, a kitchen towel that only cost me like two bucks, put it in the embroidery machine, put their name on it with this beautiful design on it. Think about it. So believe me, Marlena, before you know it, um, just do your thing, do your thing. And you'll, you'll, if it will come to you, if it's something that you want to do too. Because remember, it's not for everybody. It's not, you know what I'm saying? But you may want to, because you may want to come out and say, you know what? I want to have an extra hundred dollars in my pocket or something like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do it to get rich. You just do it to have some extra change, right? Or to do it so you can support your crafting habit. You do that. So I know a lot of people that do that. <laughs> they do that so that way they can go and buy more stuff so they can learn. So, you know, everybody's got their thing. Hey, Elma, how you doing? Hey, Karen. Hey, Jenny. Um, Hey, Becky. Oh, see, even Becky saying, you can do it. Just sell one item at a time. Before you know it, there'll be more. Yep, totally agree. Hey, Waverly, how are you? Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Crafty Puerto Rican. Yes, if you like this video and like the topic that I shared with you guys, please give me the thumbs up because that really does help the channel. I really do appreciate it. Hey, pretty eyes, how are you? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see who else we got. Hey, Jay Love, how are you doing? Hey, Marsha, how are you? Peggy, how you doing? Oh, got oh my goodness, congratulations! She got her her uh. Multi-needle today, pray for me, Peggy, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. You are. Oh, my God. And you got to make sure that you post on the Facebook page all the stuff that you make. Please do. Post it. And stuff so we can see how it's going and stuff. Hey, Marlena, how are you? 75 people, only 10, only 10 people with the thumbs up. Come on, people. Give me the thumbs up. I'm giving you all this 411. I'm going to stop. Let me stop now. Nah, I won't stop because <laughs> I like doing this stuff. So don't worry. But yeah, but please, please, please give me the thumbs up and stuff because I would really, really appreciate that and stuff. Um, let's see. Uh-oh. Marsha says she sees 23. How many do I have? I don't know. Oh, let me see. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Nancy. How you doing? And for those of you guys who don't know, Gifts HQ that's in the chat, that's actually my sister. And she does craft the rooms on Saturdays and stuff. She does knitting, sewing, quilting, all that kind of stuff. So if you guys are interested, join her channel also and stuff because she does it on Saturdays at noon. So, you know, show the support, show the support and stuff. Um, let me see. Um, I promised my husband I would become a craft and sewing hoarder. Always buy in small quantities. 
Yeah, and see, I buy in small quantities as well. And now, Maureen, something you're going to laugh at is um, my son, he's away at college right now. He goes to VCU. And his bedroom is, I literally, like, I took one of the bedrooms in our house, and his bedroom is, like, next, next door. And unfortunately, when he goes away to college, one of the things that I do is I actually, like, take some of my stuff and I put it in his room. And then when he comes home, right, like, unexpectedly, like, he'll go in his room, and when he sees my stuff in there, I can just hear it. He just goes, Ma, you know, and I'm like, oh, sorry, and I have to go in there and take all the stuff out. But you know, I mean, sometimes I think to myself, oh, when you moving out, you know, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah. But mellow, mellow is mellow. People are asking about your boo boo. You want to say hi? Do you want to say hi? Say hi. Okay, here he is, guys. Here's Nello. Yeah, Nello, you want to say hi, everybody? Look at that. And he is wagging his tail. Look at that tail go. Oh, my goodness. He's okay. Can you sit down? Can you sit? You don't want to sit? You don't want to sit? Okay. All right. He's not going to sit, guys. Oh, my goodness. You're not going to sit. Oh, he's sitting. Look at that. Oh, you're such a good boy. Yeah, you went to training. Did you? Oh, look at that. So, yes, the supervisor is here with me. Look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. And stuff. But, yeah, Iris, here's your, here's your supervisor. He's here. <laughs> hey, Miss Hill, how are you? Hey, Judy, how you doing? Uh-oh, I guess Nancy said Joanne. So, I guess my sister went to Joanne's. They must have had a sale or something. Are we going to go to Joanne's? I heard Joanne's let pets in, but no, I'm not going to take you there because you're too big. You're too big, Mello. Oh, Marlene says, um, oh, my neighbor walks with his German Shepherd dog and his parakeet on his shoulder all the time. Yeah, people love their pets. Well, I, you know, and I can't, I can't say anything because you know I love this little, this little guy right here. As you can see, he's a attention giver. I guess now I have to keep petting you, huh? I do, I do, I know, I know. You gonna watch a movie later, me and you? Watch a movie. Look at the way you look at me. He's too cute. <laughs> what do you want, money? <laughs> Um, look at that. See, oh god, he wants attention. All right, Iris, you woke him up. <laughs> you woke up, Mello. Look at that. He's staring at me. You see the screen, Mello? You see everybody? You see? Look, that's you. Look at you, handsome, handsome. Hey, Karen, how you doing? Love working with patches. Oh, Marcia said, I embroider my dog's collar and leashes with their name and my phone number. Yeah, and, and that is, I'm telling you guys, that is really, really, really popular. And then one of the things also is sometimes people don't want like the phone number to be too big. That's why I was thinking about the patches, okay? Because when, if you guys saw the video of when I showed you guys um, when subtitles patch would be the best option right if you look at the patches that i had in that video you're going to see the patches were not that big right the fonts were small but it was readable so the thing is you could make a patch like that that has the pet's name and the owner's phone number and then you can sew that patch to their coat right you can sew it on their coat and stuff and you can and you could even and if you don't want to actually embroider right on the leash you can take the actual patch and you can sew the patch on the leash as well. That's another idea. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, just so many things. You can be so creative and see, it's, it's kind of like you can take some ideas from some of the stuff that people are selling that are best sellers, right? But all you're doing is you're putting your own little niche in there, right? You're just you're taking that idea and you're 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 utilizing it in a different way for the customer to use. That's that's all it is. So, you know, it's just something to think about. Um, let me see. Hey, Charlene, how you doing? Um, new subscriber, love watching and learning from you. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're enjoying the channel. And so, hey, Sylvia. Oh my goodness, I almost skipped you. Hey, Annette. 
Walk by Faith, how you doing? Jean jacket and awesome to embroider on. Yes, and you know, one of the things that I do like about the jean jacket Walk by Faith is the fabric. Fabric from the jean jacket. Let me pull it out so we can talk about this just a little bit more because you guys know I like to... Jean jackets are very, very sturdy. This is like really rough, right? Sometimes with certain um, fabrics and materials, it can be kind of difficult to embroider because they have that stretch. So when you have like a shirt um, that has stretch on it, whenever, and that's one of the things that I always tell people, when you have a stretch in there, that's when you want to use cutaway stabilizer. That's something that, that you know, you should put in your head, okay? Stretch, cutaway. No stretch, tear away, okay? That's, you know, because sometimes I get that question a lot. When should I use tear, uh, tear away and when should I use cutaway, okay? So on a G jacket, I use um, tear away. I don't use cutaway, okay? Because jean jackets are very, very sturdy. There's no stretch in here. There really isn't. It's very, very sturdy, okay? So, I mean, they're very, they're actually, to me, easier to embroider than when you have fabric that has a little stretch on it, okay? Because when you have fabric that stretches, there's going to be a lot of things that you're going to have to think about. First of all, you're going to have to see how far does it stretch. If it stretches a lot, then you have to make sure that whatever you embroider on there, somehow there's going to be some type of stability in there. So of course, you're going to use cutaway stabilizer, but there might be um, it, it might end up falling in the category where you may want to use knockdown stitches as well. And the knockdown stitches, sometimes a lot of people think that knockdown stitches is just so that you can give your stitches a lift, which is true. You're, that's what you're doing. If you have like a fabric that has a lot of fuzz and stuff like that, you don't want your stitches to sink into the fabric. So the knockdown stitches kind of gives it a little lift. But also remember, knockdown stitches also provide a little bit of stability as well. So if you have something that is very, very stretchy, okay, and you feel that the actual design of the embroidery just might not work well with that type of fabric that you are embroidering on because of the stretch in there, you may want to consider adding knockdown stitches to the design because that will provide a little more stability to the actual design because this is the thing that i tell people is when you embroider something think about how that in it, how that that design that you're going to do on that fabric how is it going to last okay and what i mean is that item is going to be going into a washing machine dryer stuff like that now one of the things i do recommend is that you make sure you give your customers um, some kind of a card with some care instructions or talk to them and let them know how they should be caring for that item, okay? But you want to try to make sure that whatever you embroider, that it is stable enough so that when it goes into a wash and washing cycle and stuff like that, it can, it can survive it, all right? Because I have seen customers, like I, I know there was a lady that came to me and she she had a polo shirt, okay? And she said she wanted me to go ahead and embroider their new polo shirts, okay, for her company because she didn't like the way the embroider did the, the shirts in the past. So I asked her to bring me a sample of the work that he did, right? Because I'm over here thinking, well, I wonder what kind of stitches did he do? Maybe, it, you know, did he maybe use the wrong stabilizer and stuff like that? Because you want to you wanna see what, what is the customer talking about. Right. So I, I will tell you this. She bought me the shirt and I looked at it. And what happened was that she put it in the washer, she put it in the dryer and the design kind of crunched up a little bit. And then what I did was I said, oh, I know how to fix this. So I went and I took it to the ironing board and I um, put Teflon sheet on top of it. And then I ironed the actual embroidery design, right? You never iron, you know, you don't put your iron on top of your embroidery design straight on, okay? Never do that, all right? Always take a piece of fabric or take a piece of Teflon sheet and put it on top of the embroidery design and then you iron it. Once I did that, it looked like no, okay? So the embroiderer did nothing wrong, 
okay? The embroiderer did everything right. When I looked at the item, he had two sheets of stabilizer, which is exactly what I would have done. The design was perfect. I mean, it looked good. It's just that when she washed it, it crunched up a little bit because she didn't know how to care for it, okay? So just something else I wanted to share, you know, just think about that. So, you know, um, yeah. So <laughs> I got tongue tied here. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it is kind of, you know, so just think about the fabric when you're, you're embroidering and stuff like that. You know, um, you, you always want to think about how the item is going to be used and you want to make sure that the, the customer has an understanding of it. Um, and, and a lot of times when you have local orders, you can have, the, it's very easy to have those conversations with your customers because they're coming to you directly and you're building that business relationship with them, right? So you, you try to educate them and stuff. Online orders are a little more difficult on that end because they're actually just going in there and they're ordering your product, which is why I always say it's really good to have some care instructions. So that way, when you send out your items, make sure you, you also provide them care instructions. So that way, they know how to care their, for their item and it can be lasting a long time. Because don't, don't assume that when people order from you that they know. That's one thing for sure. Don't always assume that. That's something that that's really, really important because what ends up happening is um, people order it and it looks beautiful and they put it in the washing machine or whatever. And the next thing you know, they're like, oh, you know, it's, you know what I mean? Okay. So I'm just <laughs> very, very important. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, Charlene, how you doing? Um, Crafty Puerto Rican says she loves working with patches. I like patches too. I'm going to be honest with you. I like patches. I think patches are really, really cool. Um, and I really do try to steer a lot of my customers towards patches because they're reusable if they're cared for correctly. And I, and I emphasize to them. But sometimes they just want the embroidery right on the shirt. And it's fine too. It's fine too, you know, and stuff. But I always like to provide the customer the choices and stuff. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, okay. Kim says, do you have any videos about making patches? Yes, I do. Haven't even tried that yet. I'm not a I'm a big chicken. Kim, don't, don't be a chicken. I'm telling you, you're going to learn from mistakes. I'm telling you. And Kim, if you've watched any of my videos and stuff, is some of my videos, I made mistakes and I keep the mistakes on the videos. Okay. I, I don't, I know that some people, what they do is when they, they, they videotape a certain project or something like that, they videotape it. So they make it look like, you know, it's perfect. This is how you do it. And stuff like that, I'm kind of different. I'll do it. And if I make a oops, well, you're going to see the oops. Okay. I prefer to leave the oops there because we're all human. And if I made that mistake, chances are by you watching me make that mistake, you're going to learn that, okay, don't do what she did. Okay. Because <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Okay. So don't be afraid. But I do have patches on the channel. So if you go to the channel and you do a search on patches, you're going to probably see, I think about like three or four videos. Um, I have a video on how to create patches using plastic, how to use, tw uh, how to create uh, the patch using the twill. Um, and I think I have others as well, but I do have, I, I have. So just, you know, I'm just drawing a blank right now, but if you do search on patches on the, on the channel, you will find, uh, you know, a, a patch uh, video on there and stuff. So that way you can give it a shot and stuff. Um, let me see what others that I have. Hey, Karen, how are you? Um, feels good to make a live again. Well, it's good to have you back. Um, oh, Mar Marlene says that she's working on a patch for a school right now. Don't have twill. What can I use? You can use the plastic um, if it's a filled patch, okay? And you can use pack, uh, fabric. However, though, money twill is really the way to go because of the sturdiness. Okay, twill does provide some type of sturdiness on there. And I do have a piece of twill here so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. 
Here you go. I'll take it out of my stash here. This is Twill. Okay, so Twill is very, very sturdy. Okay, as you can see, it's this is what it looks like. It's it's kind of shiny and stuff like that, but this is very, very strong fabric. Okay. You could use fabric, but this is the thing. This will make it more sturdy. Your patch will be more sturdy, okay? Um, no, this, this was done. Okay, this is not on twill. This was actually done on plastic, okay? Um, I have a video on using plastic. So, Marlene, if you're going to be working on a patch, and it's a fill design, okay? When I'm talking about fill, I'm talking about the whole patch is, is filled in. All right, you don't have any spacing or anything like that. You can use plastic. But remember, plastic plastic has some kind of weight to it, okay? Because you want the patch to have some kind of weight. And that's what it is with the twill. The twill is pretty cool. Now, the twill also comes in different colors, okay? Now, one of the things that I recommend is when you are working on a patch, make sure that the background of your, of your twill matches as closely possible as the um the color of the thread that that's going to be your fill okay um the reason being is at uh, one time i tried to use this color and it, and the background was black and the thing is the fill was not um dense enough and you could kind of see between the stitches the the color silver okay so that wasn't going to work because it had to be a solid solid uh patch now this is twill this is not this is not fabric this is twill okay but twill is is a is thick twill is very very thick and it's really good now this does not have a fill okay this patch is just the border and this is just the initials and the twill all right as for this patch this is not twill all right and if you look real close those are stitches all right so the the light blue in between the purples, these are actual stitches in there. And this patch was actually made on plastic, okay? So, you know, Marnie, what I would recommend is just play around with it. Play, you know, play with plastic, play with twill, uh, play with the fabric. You know, sometimes you can get away with it. You know, it depends on the design and, and where it's actually gonna go too. You know what I'm saying? Because if it's just a patch that you're gonna sew on a jacket or something like that, you could probably use fabric, you know? I mean, and this is the other thing too, guys. There, you know, sometimes, you know, there there is a certain way that some people do things, okay? But just because some people do things a certain way, that doesn't mean you can't be creative and, and create patches using another method, okay? you it, As long as you are happy with the outcome and the customer is happy with the outcome it's a win-win situation that's how i see it not everything has to be done the same way okay i mean and and you got to remember too fabrics come in different weights and texture so you can probably find a, a piece of fabric that doesn't have stretch that is heavy and and you know and 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 it's just as good as twill and it, and if it works use it i mean why you know why why do you have to do what everybody else is doing so it's just something to think about you know you don't have to do it the 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 objective at the end of the day and see and this is the plastic i have some plastic in here too okay so you guys can see okay this is the plastic okay all right you can get this from home depot or lowe's and stuff um you know you don't have to get the same brand that i use in the video as long as it's like the same thickness then you're good okay you know um this is really like uh what the painters use to cover the floor and stuff like that you can go to the bag you can buy you, you know um go to the the hardware store and just buy the plastic this is where i made this right on here okay you know so I'm just saying, <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, you know, so there's, 
different ways to make patches, okay? You just got to, I mean, you just got to look at, at, at what it is that you're working with, okay? If you're working with a design that is that is filled like this, okay, that is nothing but complete stitches, then you can do, you can do plastic, okay? But if you have a design that's like this, where it's just the border and then just the uh, the um, initials in there, okay? This is not a fill-in because what's, what's here is not stitches. This is actually the fabric, the twill. Where did I put the twill? I put the twill somewhere. Oh, there it is. It's just, it's just a twill, okay? And, you know, and, and all I did was just embroider around it and then just embroider the initials, okay? So this actually served as the fill, okay? So it depends on what it is that you're, that, that what design you're using to create the patch that will help, that can help you determine what options you have to actually create the patch that you need. You know, there's just so many different things. And that's one of the things that I really love about embroidery, you know, because, you know, there's just so many different ways to do things, okay? Now, you know, there are some things that people prefer to do it in some certain way because of different reasons, right? So as, as you start to learn embroidery and you start to practice more and everything like that, you start learning oh, okay, so it has to be thicker fabric because um, it's going to be too flimsy or something like that. And you start learning all this stuff. It all starts coming to you and everything. So, yeah. So, um, let's see. Don't forget. Oh, thank you, Karen. Yes. It, um, please give me that thumbs up because that, that would really help the channel a lot. Hey, Sylvia, how you doing? It's a beautiful blank. Oh, thank you. I have been playing with different designs. For the blankets, um, I kind of do like making these blankets because they're they're pretty simple and I kind of like it. You know, I, I really do. I enjoy making the blankets a lot. Um, <laughs> my sister said, Mello has, <laughs> she knows, it's true, has a closet full. It is true. I mean, Mello, my, my dog even has boots, winter boots, um, because... Um, and he's used to it. It's like in the winter time, he has his socks and then he also has winter boots, especially when it snows. When it snows out there, he has his boots on because a lot of times what happens is people put salt on the ground. And I heard that's not very good for their paws. You know, it can it can irritate their feet and all that kind of stuff and everything. So he always has his winter coat on or you know, and his winter coat has has a scarf, or if he wears his other coat that's a little lighter, I'll put a scarf on him, and then he has his boots on. I actually have a picture, and I'll probably post it on our Facebook so you guys can see how serious I am. <laughs> and everybody kind of laughs because, I mean, even the, the dog walkers, when they see him, they're like, oh, my God, he has a different outfit every day. So, yeah, so he's a, he's a trip and stuff. Oh, Karen, I'm so sorry. Um dad passed away he was 98 wow i'm so sorry and so um yeah me and nancy know how you feel because we lost our dad and so, so i'm so sorry for your loss we lost our dad um it's getting close to two months he passed away june 5th uh this year so yeah me and nancy had a very difficult time with that um hey rita um hi Jeanette. i'm so bummed that you have to have stitch artist first to get the patch program oh i didn't know that i would love to have the patch program but no interest in stitch arts. i didn't know that and stuff i'll check on that but um yeah but see you know with me it's kind of different because i have the whole suite of in brilliance so it's it you know and i actually bought it all right up front because I didn't want stitch artists, but my husband was the one, oh, you know, I want to learn digitizing. And then when he found out how hard it was, he was kind of like, oh, you know, <laughs> so that didn't work out. So, um, yeah, but um, I have the Merly, um, Merly patch. However, though, Rita, there is an option, though, okay? Um, you can purchase um, files that, you know, that have the patch. Okay, they have the digitized file patch. And then all you have to do is put your design inside of them. As a matter of fact, probably what I'll do is I'll do a video on how to do that for those for you guys that don't have 
the patch program. I think I'm, I'm going to do that because that's, that's, that'll be a quick video and, and I can show you guys exactly how to do that. And, um, and you guys can create your own patches and stuff like that because, you know, because first, I mean, embroidery software can be so expensive. It, it really can, you know, and it's, it's like I always say, embroidery is not for, for everybody, the cost of everything. Okay. Um, you know, the hoops, the machines, the thread, the stabilizers, um, the different types of stabilizers. I mean, it's, it can, it can really get up there, but, um, Rita, I will, I will do something to show you a trick that you guys can use. Okay. Um, you know, so that way you guys can create your own patches. Okay. Um, and you don't have to like, you know, it's, it's a cheaper alternative. All right. What you do is you just buy the frames, right. And if you buy the embroidery frames of, then you can go ahead and you can create your own patches in there. Like, you know, the circle and the squares and all that kind of stuff and everything. So We'll, we'll do a video on that and stuff. Um, hey, Gail, how are you? Um, hey, Debbie, how are you doing? Oh, Alyssa said McCall's are on sale now for $1.99 at Joann's. So usually when McCall's on sale, I believe the other sewing patterns are on sale. But I got to tell you something. I have no business going to Joann's to buy any more sewing patterns because I went last time, bought a whole bunch of sewing patterns. And, um, well, you know, I did do, I, I did the, the scissors and I made another one. I didn't show you guys. I did actually sew this and this came out okay. Um, you know, it, isn't that cute? I made a little, a little patch for myself. Um, I didn't. I really suck at following directions, okay? Because I I ended up having to use my serger to do this because um, you could see the raw edges inside because I didn't follow the directions like you were supposed to, okay? I really suck at that. And I really wanted to use these decorative uh, zippers that I have purchased. I wanted to use that. So, but this came out pretty good. So I'm using this for my accessories for my Juki quilting machine. So in here is where I put my quilting foot and all the stuff for my, my uh, thing. So I made these, but the thing is I have so many sewing patterns that I had already bought that I need to start making that. I, I wanna start using the sewing patterns. I need to start because then what ends up happening is I'm gonna end up with a library of sewing patterns that I didn't use. And that's gonna piss me off. That's gonna really, cause I'm gonna be like, you wasted money. You know what I'm saying? So um, I actually, yeah, I, until I use all the patterns that I have right now, I am not going to go and buy. And same time, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything anyway, because it's not like Joanne's is not going to have that sale again. Because from what I understand, Joanne, I think, does this on a monthly basis where they put all those sewing patterns at $1.99. So when I'm done with these sewing patterns, then I'll go back and I'll buy more for a dollar ninety-nine, I don't want to end up with like boxes and boxes of sewing patterns that I bought because I thought I was going to use, and then I did, and then I'm I'm gonna be like, really, you know? So, yeah. So, um, oh, Eartha said you don't need stitch artist to make a patch. You can use an applique. For oh, yep, that's exactly yep. Yeah, I'll do I'll do a video for you guys so that way you guys can see how how to do it and stuff. It's not that it's not that hard and stuff. Hey Mickey, how are you? How you doing? Hey Ozzy, how are you? Hey Ken, so true about the book bags, etc. Getting wrecked. <laughs> I remember my kids stuff. Thanks for the heads up to have patches removable or as a decor. Yeah, patches are really, you know, a lot of people overlook the patches, the functionality of a patch, the things you can do with a patch, I'm telling you. Um, let's see. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Bows and Crafty. Um, I've been watching videos on how to make pillowcases that are very pretty and unique. Might have to, I'm telling you, yeah, pillowcases are really... You know, a lot of times, you know, if you make different ones, and this is the other thing too, okay? A lot of times people make pillowcases and they're square. They're square, they're round. You can, think about it. You can create a shape, 
star, heart, um, pentagon, any type of shape you want, right? As long as you can sew it and sew it together and put a zipper on it or something like that so that people can stuff it, you can make it different. You can make it different. You can make it your own. I'm just saying, you know, it's like, it's just so many different things you can do, you know? Um, hey, Nat, um, let me see. Oh, Annette said she is getting ready to embroider a tablecloth for her sister-in-law. And I know it's going to take some time. I only have a single meal. That's okay. Just have fun with it. That's all. Just have fun with it and stuff. Oh, and then Jay Love says she loves the idea of the patch, taking the patch off when the bag, the bag has gone wrong. Yep. I tell you, you can reuse it. You can reuse it. Oh, and Rita, Rita say, I've been a subscriber to this channel for a year and a half. And most of the time when I chat, it tells me I need to be a subscriber. Does this happen to anyone else? Oh, if you're a subscriber, it shouldn't. I mean, well, one of the things, though, I do put on, sometimes I'll turn it on, sometimes I won't. You know, um, I'll say on the chat, just subscribers only. Um, but, you know, and the reason why I do that is because, you know, I really would like to make sure that the subscribers are the ones that can really ask the questions and all that kind of stuff and everything. But other times I don't put it on because I do want new people to be able to engage as well, right? So it just kind of sometimes depends on the topic. If it's something that I really want people to provide feedback and I know that people might have a lot of questions on and stuff, then I'll... I'll leave it off so that people can freely ask questions and stuff like that. But then other times I'll just like turn it on, but I usually turn it off for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, can you share where you have your fabric labels made? Yes, Lori. Um, I do have it linked in my Amazon storefront. So if you go on the video description, you'll see my Amazon for storefront. And if you click on that, you will be able to see where I actually get them. They're pretty inexpensive and they have different styles and stuff. I have looked at other vendors that make labels, but they get kind of pricey because I think they use some kind of other material and stuff like that. But the ones that I use, I mean, they do the job, they work well, and they're not as pricey as a lot of the others that I've seen out there. So you may want to check them out. But if you click on my Amazon storefront, you will be able to find them there. Um, let's see. Let's see. And Rita, thanks again for the super chat. I really appreciate that. You said that helps a lot. Annette, how are you? Um... Oh, Marsha said, I have, I'm watching two things at once. <laughs> um, great chat. You always keep me going. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys really like these chats and stuff. Um, let's see. I'm going down real quick um, to see. Let me see. Oh, question. Okay. When the question begins, do. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let me put you on so people can read it with me. Um, please have any embroiderers charge a consultation fee, either within the price estimate or pre-discussion. Okay. Specialty orders. Okay. I don't. Okay. I don't. I do not um, charge uh, pre-consultant free. Now, this is what I do charge, okay? Like, let's say somebody comes to me and they have um, their logo or they have a particular design that they want to, to get embroidered and I have to get that digitized. I will charge a fee for that, okay? Um, the consultation fee, I don't do that, um, you know, because the way I look at it is, I mean, we're not talking about two or three hours. Okay. A lot of times the conversations that I have with customers from the very beginning, I usually keep it as a limit as to 15, 20 minutes. And the thing is you have to know how to, how to manage that. Okay. And this is usually what I do. First of all, 
they come to me and they say, I want some embroidery done. And I go, okay, fine. And it, the, the first two questions that I ask is, what type of embroidery are you looking for? And when do you need it by? Okay. Now, the way they respond to the second question, when do you need it by? That already automatically tells me exactly if that's a serious customer or is this someone that's just fishing, right? If they are a serious customer, they're going to say, I need this by next week or I need this by two weeks, three weeks. They have already a time frame and they know up front what type of embroidery. Like, what is it that you're looking to get embroidered? It's a polo shirt. Is it a jacket? Is it, you know, a particular product that you need me to, you know, to get for you? And a lot of times I'll just have that conversation with them up front. Now, you know, you can kind of tell when someone's fishing or not. Um, I don't exactly, you know, I'll just tell them up front, you know, if you have the questions right up front, you go, what is it that you're looking for? When do you need it by? Right there, you're talking business, right? So if they don't know what they want, then usually what I'll do is I'll say, okay, well, why don't you look around? And then if you see something that you like, that you want me to duplicate or something, you just let me know. And it kind of ends right there. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to look for you, okay? Because this is how I look at it. You got to know what you want, okay? I'm not there to pick the stuff for you, okay? Now, I will help advise, for instance, the type of fabric and all that kind of stuff that I don't have a problem with because, of course, I'm not going to go ahead and take something and embroider it on fabric that I know that I'm going to end up getting a bunch of puckering. And, you know, it's just not is too dense for the, the for the type of fabric and so on. So, you know, you really have to kind of really take control of that conversation, okay? Because you don't want it to drag out, okay? So, you know, me personally, I don't charge a consultation fee, okay? Um, because the conversations don't really last that long, all right? I'm not going to sit there for like two or three hours with a customer because if you're doing that, then what it is is usually the, the, the customers don't know what they want. And you got to be careful with that because you got to remember your time is money, okay? Your time is money. And, um, you know, I just, I'm very direct, okay? It's like, what, what do you want? When do you need to buy? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all it is. You know, I mean, I'm not there to draw stuff for you. I'm not, that's not the service that I provide. I'm not there to uh, create your logo or anything like that. It's just, that's not a service. No, you, you got to know what you want. And if they're kind of iffy, then I just tell them, okay, well, when you are, when you have an idea of what it is that you need done and you know, when you need it by, then you can just give me a call and I'll just give them the card and that's it. That's how I do it. That's how that's that's just how I do it. OK, um, hope that helps a little bit, you know. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's just how I, you know, it works for me. It's the, um, let me see. Baby strollers. Cat. Yep. OK. Judy says car seats have all gotten so expensive. Yeah, they have. They really have. Now they come out with wonderful wagons starting around 400 and 900. Yikes, yeah, very nice, but not the price. And see, and that's the thing. Okay, so then what I would do is I would probably see if there's some kind of way that maybe you can make something, like maybe even a patch, right there, patches will work, okay? Or I can make a patch where we can just glue it or sew it to your car seat on the side or something like that. That's what I would do. Um it's a real, yes, it is. It's a real baseball. <laughs> um, I charge about like $35 for the baseball. That's how much I charge um, when I water it and sew it. Um, reading pillows are big. Yes, Annette, uh, reading pillows are big. Um, hey, Patty from Tennessee, how are you? Ooh, and Miss Evolution's working on a lot of hats. And hats are a big thing. I'm telling you, they're a big thing. And they, they are very, very profitable. That is one of the things. So don't overlook hats, guys. I'm serious. They can be very, very profitable. A hat. You buy it at wholesale, um, depending on the hat, though. 
you know, um, I get some hats for five dollars. And then if you if I'm looking at fitted hats, they're probably about like eight, eight ten dollars. Right. But the thing is, when you embroider it, you can actually sell it for like twenty five, thirty, forty dollars and stuff. I'm telling you, if there's a lids by you, walk into lids, walk into lids and take a look at their hats and ask them how much they're selling those hats for. You'll be surprised. You're going to be like, Ooh, how much are they selling this for? And, you, and you're going to look at the embroidery. And a lot of times they have an embroidery machine right inside their, their store. And you're going to look at that embroidery and I know what's going to happen. You're going to look at the hat and you're going to look at the embroidery. You're going to be like, I can do that. I can do that. You're like, what? You know? So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um... Let me see. Uh, Jeanette, please give me the information for the hoop. I've been looking on Etsy, but the one that they show is 900. Iris, the information on the hoop passer is on the video description. Okay, so you just call the company up and let them know what your machine is, and they will make sure you have the right one. Okay, and you won't have to pay for shipping either. You just got to make sure you give them that the coupon code, um, you know. Boricua sewing, and then you're you're good. And then, you know, and another thing too, guys, if you guys are military, let them know that you're military because I believe there's a discount for the military as well. Just want to let you guys know that too, okay? So, because <laughs> that's what somebody told me and I didn't know, I didn't know until after I got all my hoops. And so I was like, oh, I got but yeah, somebody um, emailed me and they said that they got the discount for the uh, shipping and then they also got military discount as well. So, just saying, um, let's see. I like how you teach. Oh, Rana, thank you so much. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you're learning. I'm glad you're learning. Um, oh, look at that. Marcia says she, her and her husband play with a group of... Uh, Bunkos with a uh, group of couples. Did I say that wrong? I said bunkos, but is it banco bronco? Y'all know my Spanglish, okay? And the wine basket would have been a good prize. I'm telling you, I am telling you. That is, and you know, and that's the other thing too. I'm telling you guys, it's not just the business side of it, okay? Because of what we do, the things that we can do are like, it's like endless. I'm telling you, it's like when it's time for you to give a gift, you can do so much. You really can. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you when my husband has a coworker that's retiring or something's going on with his job and stuff like that, I always know because he comes home and he's like, hey, Jeanette, I need this. I need that. Or, you know, this is coming up. Can you put something together and stuff like that. And I'm telling you, and he loves it because it's like when he goes into the office, it's like he, everybody's like, oh, that's nice. How did you, you know? It's like, it's the biggest thing, okay? You always end up with like the top notch thing. And, you know, and what's so funny is that you save so much money by doing this stuff yourself because all you need is the raw materials, right? And you can just create everything, like the wine basket that I was telling you guys, okay? The other thing that I do, just something that, um, you know, give you guys ideas is, you know, sometimes me and my husband have friends come over, right? Like other couples and we have dinner and we're going to do dinner or movie or just, you know, dinner and a get together, right? So usually what I'll do is I will go to Walmart and I buy those wine glasses for 98 cents, and I will etch all of the guests' names on a wine glass. And then I set the dinner table with the wine glass with their name on it. And one of the things that they love is that it's a gift, right? So at the end of the evening, after we have dinner and we had our wine glass and everything, then I take the wine glasses and I just hand wash them and stuff. And then I put them in a little bag for them to take home. So it's, it's, you know, it's just something really, really nice. And it's something that a lot of people go off oh, from, okay? 
And dinner napkins is another thing too. If you have dinner napkins, you can you can etch the glass, the wine glass with their name on it and then take the dinner napkin and you can actually embroider their name on the dinner napkin. Really cute. And then you place the dinner napkin on the plate. Just, you know, and this is another thing too. You know, Thanksgiving is coming up. Okay, let's say you're going to have your family over. Okay, you can go, you buy some beautiful fabric, cut up your own dinner napkins, all right? If you have a serger, do the rolling hem. And then if you do the rolling hem, what you can do is you can embroider everybody that's going to be at the Thanksgiving dinner table, their name. And then you can put the date and that could be a memory of that Thanksgiving that you guys had together. Just ideas. I'm telling you, there is just so many things you can do. There's just so many things you can do, okay? And so you have friends, just bought a house, moved to a new apartment and stuff. They're having a, a housewarming party. Go to Walmart, buy a bathroom set, okay? Buy a bathroom set, the towels, the hand towels and stuff like that embroider their initials on the bathroom set. You can go ahead, put it in a basket, put it with like little soaps and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And then you gift it to them with their initials on it. Oh, they're going to be like, oh. <laughs> just say it because I've done it. I'm telling you, I've done it. And it's like, everybody's like, oh my God, how'd you do it? And then sometimes they don't even know, like, let's say it's a co-worker of my husband or something, right? And I really don't know the people, but, you know, I know what it's about because they moved to a new house or whatever, right? I'll do the bath set and stuff and everything. And they're like, oh, my God. And then they think, they're like, oh, my God, you spent so much money. I don't spend that much money. I really didn't, okay? I mean, a lot of times those baskets, I... I go on Facebook, so my people giving away for free. So I'll be like, I, I'll take it. And it's just a basket, right? So I'll just like, I'll have like three or four baskets around the house. And the reason why I do that is because I'll make these little gift baskets to friends and family and stuff like that. So, you know, if you see it on Facebook or something like that, somebody's giving away a gift basket, just grab it, grab it, put it in a closet and whatever. And then whenever you need to make a gift for somebody, like even a baby, right? Somebody had a baby and stuff. Embroider a little baby uh, quilt, get a pack of uh, Gerbil onesies or Carter onesies or whatever, embroider the stuff. You can make a little baby basket, okay? And take a stuffed animal, buy a little shirt, okay? Embroider the, the shirt of the stuffed animal and put it on the stuffed animal, a little teddy bear and stuff like that. And there you go. You got something really cute with the child's name on it and stuff like that. I mean, there's just so many things you can do. So many things. You know what? I should do an embroidery happy hour on gift ideas. That's what I should do. And then you guys can come in and then I'm just going to tell you all of the stuff that I've done because I've done so much more than what I'm telling you now. And so you guys are going to have to be sitting there with your notebook and your pen. You're going to be like, oh, I can do that. Yeah, and I can do this. And I can do that. And so like that. And before you know it, you'll be like, oh, my God. I'm sorry. I don't. The, the, the amount of money that I spend on giving gifts is so minimal. It's so minimal because there's just so many things you can do. And then what happens is it looks so nice that when you gift it to somebody, they think you spent an arm and a leg. They really do, especially if they don't know you and they, they don't know that this is what you do. They're they're like, oh my gosh, she spent so much money. Just saying. I'm just saying, just you know, sharing little things. But yeah, you know, stuff you can do. I'm telling you, stuff you can do. Um, let's see, Charlene, let's see, Rhonda. I've been by myself for 11 years now my daughter's back full time and two grandkids and are here part time let's see um oh what stabilizer do you use on dish towels i use tearaway i use tearaway on them um marcia um and also uh it depends on the design be uh particular about the design that you use because remember, dishwash, di the towels 
are very plush, right? And if they're very plush, the stitches can sink in, all right? So depending on what you're doing, if you're just doing a name at knockdown stitches, if you don't have the ability to put knockdown stitches on it because you don't have the software, no problem. There is a video that I have that's, that's called knockdown and emboss files. You can buy emboss files. And what you do is on those files, you put the name on it. So it's kind of like the boss files kind of serves as your knockdown stitches. Okay. So the stitches won't fall in, but I use tearaway stabilizer on the dish towels and the kitchen towels. Okay. I don't really, you don't want to use the cutaway you can if you want to but i use the tear away um because the thing is the designs that i use is so dense that they're not going to sink into the towel okay so that's um how i do it um hey patty been trying to embroider today but got orders from grandkids for barbie shirts. everybody's into the barbie now because of the movie um turned into embroidery next up oh, everybody's into the barbie now and so I haven't seen the movie or anything. I just, I just never got into the Barbie thing and stuff. I remember me and Nancy had Barbie dolls, but I don't remember playing with them much. If anything, I think I took a marker and I would draw on the face and stuff. I'm not sure. I don't remember much. Um, hey, Valentina. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you guys find um, the information and they give you guys so helpful. Um, Oh, and Marsha's saying the grandson always brings home patches from um, vacations, and I always sold them on his um, larger jacket size, see, and move them, see, and that's what I mean. The patches are so reusable. So it's like, you know, I know people like to embroider directly on there, but just think about that. And that's something, and I'm going to tell you something, patches are actually easier to do. Then when you actually embroider on a product, because this is the thing, when you embroider on a product and you mess up, you mess up that product. When you are creating a patch, all you did was match up the patch. You can create another patch. It's not a big deal. The only time that patch is going to be any type of issue, and it really isn't, because creating the, once you got the patch done, you're good. Now it's just taking the patch and sewing it on the item. And that's just simple sewing. So it's to me, it's less risky because if when you're embroidering on an actual jacket of a customer or something like that, that can be like, you better know what you're doing because if not, you could end up having to buy that customer the jacket or having to replace it and all that kind of stuff. And it can get kind of pricey and it can get risky. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm just saying. So, yeah, patches are so, so, so durable and stuff. Um, let's see. I did a test run on the back black background, sis, and I can see the stitch not closer to each other. Did another one with a white one, and it looks better. I also use 40 weight. Yep. Yeah, you have to, you know, you sometimes you just got to learn about when you're supposed to use 40 weight, when you're supposed to use uh, 60 weight, when it's better to use what type of fabric. All that comes, all that comes. Um, the twill looks like it has a coating. Yes, it does. It has, it does have a coating on there. Um, it's very shiny. It's very shiny. Now, there's different types of twill. Um, this one I got from Stahl, I think Satchels, Satchels. Um, and this one actually has adhesive on it. I'm going to tell you something right now. I think getting the twill with the adhesive is a waste of money because the bobbin thread is going to cover that adhesive. Okay, so you're going to end up having to put heat and bond anyway. So to me, it's like, I don't, you know, I, well, I did buy it with the adhesive but then after i started doing patches and then when you turn it around right like okay like let's say this was the twill even though i made this on the plastic as you can see the back is nothing but bobbin thread right so if i had adhesive the bob the bobbin thread is going to be on top of the adhesive that's not going to do anything however though on here this is the twill but as you can see, it has adhesive here. 
this adhesive will work because I did not embroider throughout the whole patch, okay? But the areas that have the J and all that kind of stuff, you see that it has the bobbin thread. So it actually sews on top of the adhesive. So this area won't have the adhesive, but it will on the sides here. Do, do, am I making sense? So it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's like, it depends on how you are actually going to embroider your patch. If you're going to, if you're, if you're going to do a filled patch, then I wouldn't bother buying twill with adhesive on it because your bobbin thread is going to cover all that adhesive and you're going to have to go and you're going to have to put um, fabric glue. Some people use fabric glue. Some people use the heat and bond. There's different ways you can do it. But, um, yeah, so just something to think about when you're buying your twill, okay? Um, and, and you know, and this is the other thing, too. Let's say you, you don't buy the twill with the adhesive. Did you really miss out on anything? No. Because the way I look at it is you have this, okay, the twill, and you went ahead and you did a patch. You can take heat and bond or fabric glue, and you can just put it right on the back, and it works just as well, okay? I mean, so... Do you really need it? I don't think so. Just my thing, you know. And, and the thing is, I, I, if I remember correctly, I think the twill with the adhesive in the back costs more. So to me, it's like, why pay for more? Why, why pay for more expensive twill when you really don't, the chances of you using that adhesive back there, hmm. You might not really need it. You know what I'm saying? So, because there's other ways to do it. So, I don't know. I mean, you know, so I I did buy it with the, because I didn't know any better. Okay. But I know moving forward though, if I, when I buy, when I went out of the twill and I need more, it's not, I'm not, I'm not buying it with adhesive at all. I'm just not, it's not, I, I don't think to me it's, it's worth it because there's other ways to do it. So it's just something that, you know, something that, you know, to think about. Um, let's see, let's see. Hey, Fairy Soul Joe. Um, I won't tell you how many patterns I have. I guess I have a library. Yep. And that's, see, I don't want to get like that. That's why I'm like, and I just started buying some, uh, the sewing patterns because I found out that Joanne was offering them for $1.99. And I was kind of like, oh, that's cheap. So, and then I saw that they had sewing patterns for things like, like this, you know, like making little bags and stuff. So I was like, oh, you know, and I do want to start getting into sewing and all that kind of stuff. But the, the problem that I'm having though, is that my embroidery um, orders have been coming um, and they're pretty large. A lot, some of my, my stuff because i had one from a lady and and I, I made five shirts for her they don't they don't just come in for like one or two they've been they've been my orders have been coming in quite a bit so i i want to sew more but what ends up happening is when the orders come in you got to fill them right so what ends up happening is i'll start cutting a pattern and then all of a sudden it's like i gotta stop because now i gotta fill an order and you gotta fill the order because you gotta meet time right so i gotta find that balance and i haven't found it yet um because i you know it's just me working the shop and i'm doing the local orders and the online orders so um i'm on my own so it's like my time is very limited and i still work full time so it's hard it is really really hard so you know it's um you know it's okay i mean i'll make it work i'll make it work um i'm just gonna have to like get to the 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 time where I'm going to be like, okay, um, I'm going to pick a day where it's just going to be my me day where I get to do what I want to do. Like if I want to sew something and stuff like that. And sometimes I want a video and for me to do the videos, um, I have to wait till I'm kind of like alone in the house or like my husband's like, you know, downstairs, you know, having his cigar or whatever, right? Because, um, you know, everybody likes noise. So <laughs> I don't want to like, you know, be filming and then you guys hear him, you know, in the background, you know, because he's, um, 
he's an energetic person. You know what I'm saying? He gets um he gets into stuff and and he starts to laugh and he's he's kind of loud. And I'm, 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 I can be loud too. So, you know, I don't, you know, so it's like, I don't want to like keep filming and stuff. And I like to film real time. So usually what I'll do is I'll put the video camera and when I'm working on something, I'm working on it. So you, you actually, when I'm, when I'm filming my videos, you actually see me do it real time. And if I mess up, like I said before, the mistake stays in the video because I don't like to edit it out because I feel that those mistakes can help people. So, you know, it is what it is, you know, so, you know, um, yeah. So let's see. Um, let's see. Um, ba -ba -ba. I'm going down real quick. Um, how do you price text? Okay, how do you price text embroidery on something? Okay, Rana, I did do an embroidery happy hour on pricing. Okay, um, it can pricing can be a pretty tricky thing. Okay, for several reasons. First of all, it all depends on your location. All right, not a, not all locations price things the same. And the thing is also is everybody has different needs and expectations as well. Right. Um, there are so many different ways that you can price your work, right? Some people do it by stitch count. Some people do it by how many steps are involved, um, including like hooping, color changes, um, time, right? I consider a lot of those things, okay? My minimum price for anything, okay? Even if it's just one letter. Let's say you come to me and you say, hey, I just have this scarf and I just want you to embroider the letter T, letter L. I don't care what it is. The minimum price is $15. Okay. Um, then it goes up from there. And, you know, a lot of times people ask me, well, how much do you charge for this? How much do you charge for that? My pricing is very custom. Okay. Because embroidery is custom work. And this is the thing also that I find that a lot of people, they, they, they have trouble with what ends up happening is they, they just want to have like one price and they'll say, Hey, I'm just going to embroider hats and I'm going to charge $25 for the hats. That's it. And I, and to me personally, I don't think you can do that. And the reason why I say you can't do that is because not everybody wants the same hat. Not everybody wants the same design on the hat. And not everybody's going to want the same type of embroidery. And what I'm talking about type of embroidery is you can have a regular embroidery design or some people use puff embroidery on their hats. So sometimes it's one color. Sometimes you can have multiple colors. Sometimes they're also depending on the machine that you're using to embroider, okay? Some people have flatbeds, some people have multi-needle machines. So there's a lot of factors that you have to think about when you're talking about pricing, okay? And a lot of times I find that people don't accommodate their time. They don't calculate their time in there, and that's a big mistake, okay? So, um, you know, you have to look at what you are doing how long it's taking you to do it, um, you know, what steps you have to take in, and then you have to make sure that you are compensating yourself for all of that to include your time, all right? So, you know, I know that's probably not the answer that you're looking for, okay? But like I said, I, I'm. you have to, you got to remember, this is custom work, okay? So, you know, just because one customer came in and gave you something, um, you could say it's one price. That doesn't mean that the next person that comes in is going to get the same price because the next person may come in with a different type of fabric. The next person that may come in probably requires a different type of thread because I can't use my regular 40 weight thread. I probably have to order the thread that's 60 weight. Um, I probably may not be able to use a 7511 needle. I probably have to use a 659 needle. 
or a specialty needle because they don't want to use embroidery thread. Let's say that they want metallic thread. That's a whole other cost. Metallic thread costs um, more. And you also have to have a special needle for metallic thread. I mean, you can do it with a 7511 needle, but I prefer to use a metallic needle, okay? And you also have to slow down your machine. That's the other thing too, okay? We'll talk about time when you're pricing, okay? Not all, not all embroidery is the same, okay? There's going to be times where um, I've had designs that uses different weight threads within that design. And when that happens, I also have to use different types of needles in that design. And also I have to set up the machine that in certain sections of the design, it can embroider quickly. And then in other sections of the design, the machine has to slow down because it's using metallic thread or it's using a small font or, you know, it's a 65, um, 60 weight thread or something like that. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of things you have to think about. So, I mean, I know that's probably not the answer that you're really like looking for. You're probably looking for like, this is the dollar amount and that's it. But um, I don't want to do that for the simple fact that I don't want you to get gypped. Okay. I don't, you know, because like I said, I don't know the situation either. You know, sometimes, sometimes a customer could give you a piece of fabric, like satin fabric, for instance, or silk or something that's slippery, okay? And you're and because of that you may have to use sticky stabilizer or double up on your stabilizer. Um, you know, there's so many so many factors. There really truly is. There's so many factors. So it's like, you know, I I have custom pricing because all my work is custom. Okay? Um, you know, and my customers know that. All right? And Another thing that I that I say is I, I believe in fair pricing. All right. So if um you know I'm I'm not there to to rob the customer. Okay. I don't like customers coming to me and then I and then they say, hey, this is what I need, whatever. I like to be fair, okay? Fair to them, okay, and also fair to me. And I don't negotiate my prices because I know they're fair. OK, I'm not breaking their bank. It's not like I don't want them to feel like I robbed them. But at the same time, I don't want to feel like I got taken advantage of either. So a lot of times when I do the custom pricing, I explain to them the things that I have to consider while I'm making this project for them. So that way they have an understanding that it's not you're going to drop something off and I'm just going to press a button and it's done. OK, it doesn't work like that. So you got to have that conversation with your customers and stuff so that they have an understanding of why certain things cost what they do. So I hope that kind of helps a little bit. I know I know I kind of gave you a mouthful, you know, and, and stuff and everything. But it's just I, I it's just stuff that I want you to think about when you're considering pricing your items and stuff. Um, let's see. Um. Yep, Patty says, true, people love embroidered gifts at um, baby and bridal showers. Yeah, it is. It's it's a, it's really, it's special. It's really special stuff. Um, so it's like you can never go wrong. And, you know, it's uh, really cool. Um, let's see, I think I am at the end. Yes, I am. I am at the end. Um. Oh, can you buy? Oh, Ria said, can you buy a patch, uh, a pack of patches? I don't know. I think you can. I think you can. I know people do sell the patches and stuff like that. But the thing is, you can make them. You can make them. You you really can. So, so I, I don't know. I probably wouldn't do that. I, I was I would just make the patch, and stuff. Um. Oh, thanks, Karen. Well, I'm really glad. I'm glad that, you know, you guys really do like the information that um, I'm sharing with you. Um, do you feel, oh, Luna's first. Do you feel that it's necessary to purchase the, okay. All right. All right. And Brilliance has that, Luna first. Do I feel it's necessary to purchase? All right. It's a nice to have. Do you have to have it? No. 
you 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 can create your own patches without having it. It just makes it a little easier. That's all. But there is ways to do it. Okay. Um, and you know what? Um, because you're you're the second person, I'm gonna do a video, and we're gonna create a patch. Um, you know, in in, in bronze, I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. I mean, it's it's it is not hard. It really isn't. And you know what? And and in the video, I'll show you what it is that that you get with the Merly patches, okay? And why people buy it. It just makes it a little easier and it just gives you more options on the borders, okay? But the thing is, you there's ways around it. There's ways around it and stuff. And I and I will let you guys I, I'll let you guys know how to do it because this is the thing. Not not everybody can afford all this stuff, right? And and there's ways to do things. There is, okay? I mean, you know, is it easier to get the absolutely? Yeah, it's easier because there, there's like you just click here, click here, click here, and then you got your border and then you, you're good to go, right? But there's ways to do it. There, there is ways to do it and stuff. You know, you don't you don't have to have everything under the sun, you know, it just makes it just a little easier. But so what? If you're willing to do the extra work then fine. Now you will have to buy something, which, which is the actual patch design, but I'll show you. I'll, I will go on, we'll, you know, I'll, I'll do the video and I'll show you guys where you can get the patch design and, and different ways that you can make a video. So that way you could, you could see how it is. Okay. And stuff. So, you know, don't, um, love first. Don't, don't worry. I mean, I, I will, I will help you guys out with that because I know that there's a, a lot of people that have um, questions about that stuff. And, and this is the thing too. It's like, this is so, it, embroidery can be so, so expensive. It really can. So, you know, especially when you're first starting out, you want to make sure that you're spending your money where you really need to spend the money. Okay. And if there's a way that you can do something without like, you know, spending everything now, like maybe down the line, you'll want to invest, right? Because you see that it, it makes it a little easier. But if you have a workaround and it works, then I would say do the workaround, you know, because to me, what's important is the end result, right? That you're happy with what you got and that your customer's happy with it also. That's really what counts, right? Um, you know, how you got there, let's just focus on the end goal. That's how I see it. Okay. So I will, I will do a video. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll do it this weekend because that way you guys can get rolling on those patches. Okay. <laughs> um, let me see it. No, it does not perforate. Okay. Marsh, if I do have a video on how to make the patches on the plastic, it is on the channel and stuff. So that way, um, you'll see exactly how I do it. Um, it does kind of perforate it, but the thing is you want it to perforate, okay? Because it makes it so easy to just peel it off. Um, what it is is when you have twill like this, you have to take a scissor and you have to cut. You have to cut your edges, right? And you have to be like super careful because if, you, if you're not careful, you don't want to cut your, your stitches. All right. And then also you want to take a um, hot knife and you want to run the hot knife on your edge because you want to seal it. OK, so. Um, yeah, like some people will use a. Um, a match or a lighter. Um, I'm scared of fire, so I I just I just got a hot knife. They're pretty inexpensive. They're not that expensive. And you just um, put it over that's all it is and then you just you just seal it that way the only thing with the hot knife that i tell people is be very very careful with it because it is a hot knife so if you have kids running around and stuff like that like i know i got mellow so usually what i'll do is when i need the hot knife i'll lock myself in the bathroom that way i have it positioned and i know nobody's gonna touch it and then i can go ahead and i'll do the thing and then i can leave it in the bathroom when I unplug it and, you know, or put it in the kitchen on the towel um, thing. Cause I have to be very conscientious of him because, you know, animals can get curious and kids get curious and you don't want them to accidentally burn themselves and stuff like that. So you just got to be very, very careful 
with that because you don't want somebody to accidentally go there. Um, so you don't want the threads to you kind of the you the okay, the threads are in a way melting, but it seals it. And what happens um is that it it um it seals it so it doesn't fray. That's what it is. You don't want it fraying on the edges, okay, and stuff. You'll see that. If you watch any other patch videos, you'll see that and you'll notice that. You'll see that I take the hot knife and I just go on the, the side, okay? So it'll all, like, show up, you know. You guys will see it. That uh, stuff. Believe me, it's not that hard. You, you guys will be okay. All right, guys. So I am going to sign off now. It is 1045. It is always my embroidery happy hour. It is embroidery happy hours. But... <laughs> <laughs> the first hour, I always try to make sure I give you guys all the 411, and then the rest of the time is just us just hanging out and stuff. But I hope you guys found today's video helpful, you know, the topic very helpful and everything. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, you guys kind of like, you know, thought about different things, things that, you know, are good sellers and stuff, but I wanted to present it to you guys in a way so that you guys can think about how you're going to be able to do those bestsellers, but kind of like do it in a way that you can put your little unique touch to it, okay, and stuff. Because this is the thing. I don't, you know, like I said before, I don't want to come on and say, hey, you know, this is a product. Go ahead. You, this is going to sell. Because the thing is, it doesn't work like that, you know, <laughs> because if it worked like that, you know, easy it would be to run a business and you know to be successful sometimes you just gotta you 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 gotta you gotta put in you gotta you gotta put in your dudes and stuff like that so you know i hope you know that you guys found the information out um helpful got you guys thinking and you know go out there and do your thing okay so i will see you guys you guys have a great weekend please stay safe and if you knew the channel and you like what you see please consider subscribing and if you know anybody that might want to benefit from these um embroidery happy hours please share the information share the channel with all your friends your family or other folks that you think might be interested in and stuff like that so that way the channel can continue growing and everything and um you know and if you have ideas let me know you know of videos and stuff like that that you guys might might need help on i have a facebook group embroidery happy hour adventures please join that um i do my best to try to keep that Facebook group as clean as possible. I don't want any scammers in there. So I do check the accounts to make sure that these are legit accounts, okay, and stuff, because I want that Facebook group to be a safe place for everybody to share information and learn from each other, okay? So, you know, if you have any questions about any of that, please feel free to reach out, um, you know, and have fun sewing and embroidery, guys. So I will talk to you guys later. You guys have a great weekend and please stay face. I mean, stay face. Stay safe. You guys can tell I'm tired. <laughs> anyway, you guys have a good one and I will see you guys next Friday. Talk to you guys later. Bye.